I don't know. Is it? Yeah, yes, it. we're live. Welcome back to the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. This is the Who Moves My Freedom podcast. Number five. Number five is alive. And our special guest today is Maj Toure. Right? I'm saying that right? Yeah. Black, black, black guns. Black guns matter. Oh, man. Black guns matter. Founder of Black Guns Matter, right? Yep. All right, so he's going to be here with us. He's going to teach me a bunch of things. He, he just taught me how to say Maj Toure, because that's the right way to say it, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Black Guns Matter. Mm -hmm. And um, you, do you want to explain to my audience out there for the one or two people who've never heard of you, who you are and what is Black Guns Matter? Yeah, um, I'm a reformed scumbag. I am a... North Philadelphia native. I am a guy that's just trying to do the right thing and travel around the country and inform hoods across America on proper, uh, putting them on the path, a starting point, entry level into uh, their passion for firearms, knowledge, and safety. And just being, just trying to, you know, make the hood great again, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so we, right. we created an organization called um, Black Guns Matter, you know, and that's pretty much what we do. We, we're currently on a 50 state tour. Um, all of our tour and all of our funding is, you know, from you all, the people, through your donations, through your, your purchasing of the merchandise and stuff like that. So I'm just a dude just trying to, you know, wake the hood up. That's pretty much it. Awesome, man. Look, there's a few things in there I want to unpack. So, for, you know, a couple of things. I like the, I like make the hood great again. That is that a t-shirt yet? It's, it's on the way, actually. It's going to be a t-shirt yeah. and a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make, make sure I get one of those. Cause... I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. That's nice. And, um, you know, there's uh, there were obviously a bunch of good things in there that I'm going to touch on. But, you know, you started off saying that you're a reformed scumbag. So what, what does that mean what, for what folks out there who don't know your background? I think that everybody in Philly has known me from, you know, doing various things around Philly. Um, scumbag meaning somebody that's not really living up to their best potential. Scumbag is somebody that's okay with the negative s s surroundings and situations that surround um, Some Scumbag is people that sometimes allow those things to just be okay. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, you're seeing, if you're seeing somebody doing the wrong thing, let's say if you a law enforcement officer and you see your partner doing something corrupt, you're a scumbag if you let them, period. You're not stepping in to, you know, promote justice and you're not stopping injustice. Right. You're not as good a person, a human being as you could be. Nope. And, and right. on purpose. And I'm not saying just because you was chilling and not going to the gym and eating donuts. That just make you, you know, a couch potato. But when you're when you're actively allowing and, 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 and engaging in things that, you know, are not productive and, and counterproductive to yourself and bigger than that, other people and they could potentially cause harm to other people and you cool with that you know you scumbag it at that point you right know? so you're saying like someone who's doing this but not from an ignorant point of view that they don't know any better they know what they're doing absolutely and okay. you know what you're doing and, and you get that feeling you get that feeling that little tingle in your stomach like it and it, the tingle might be you know enticing to you oh, i'm gonna do this because it's wrong you're on the wrong path and you know I, I think a lot of people in the hood that's that's a lot a uh, major reason why we don't, i don't really judge people you know, a lot of a lot of people that come to our classes, convicted felons, um, people that are still in the street. I'm not judging them. I wish I would have had somebody to tell me, put me on a game at that point, instead of judging me and give me give, give me some critical information that could actually help me not be a scumbag anymore. You know, so that's, I think it's a major reason why we're making the progress that we're making at Black Guns Matter because you're we not judging. We yeah, we and we don't we don't allow that type of slander on things that you know, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment, we so quick to say shall not be infringed, but at the same time we judge somebody else for their lack of information. Or we're, we're, we're calling them out because, you know, oh, they, they used to do X, Y, and Z, man. I don't care what you did in your past. I don't care. If you're I, think we're, I think we're all capable of having done bad things in the past and the future, right? I mean, right. what human being's perfect out right. there? Exactly. You know. And I think that's, that's, that's the biggest thing to to acknowledge that, hey, I was doing the wrong thing and now I'm, I'm, I'm rectifying that and I'm actively, you know, pushing it, you know, to correct my karma, you know? Right. So for me, as be, when I say reform scumbag, I mean like that. When you, you know when you're doing scumbag stuff, to be honest, yeah. you know, and, and if, if you want to look in, in that mirror and be honest with yourself, you know, and I just got to a point where it was, it was time to, you know, be honest with myself, you know? 
yeah. in, in, in our lives and my team and my guys that are no long, you know, that are no longer on that path, our lives have been so much more fruitful since then. And I hate to sound cheesy, but it's just it's just facts. Right. So what kind of, you know, I mean, can we go into a little bit of detail here? I, I'm not trying to get you to fully expose, but, you know, what kind of things are you talking about? Uh, obviously, um, growing up in Philly. Yeah. Well, the statute of limitations for those things have long since expired. So I'm good mm -hmm. to talk about it. Um, I mean, just just doing things. I mean, like even even if it comes to firearms, like. You, you know, you shouldn't rob somebody. You know, you shouldn't. Right. But it's easy. Yeah, if people have no situational awareness. They in they phone. You know what I mean? It's, they lunch me. You know, but you shouldn't do it, and you know you shouldn't do it. You you you're, you're you're justifying your lack of drive to to generate resources in one area, so you think you should take it from other people. That's one area that you know some people, uh, yeah. you know, participate in scumbag activities. Right. Um, I mean, I understand, man. You know, I, I don't know. How old are you? Everybody asks that. I start telling everybody I'm 65 now. <laughs> I tell everybody that because that's so, so, people, that, I guess that, so they can say you look good for 65. Right. Or is there when, when they say that, when you go, oh man, you look so good, and you feel great. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I say that now because I don't want any of this movement to be about me right. at all. My mm -hmm. age, well, everybody's you know searching and searching for other information, but my age, right. I'm old as hell, man. I'm old yeah. as hell. Yeah, I've, I've found that when you tell people you're old as hell, especially um, if you say you're really old, people give you a certain uh, extra ear. But if people are close to your age, they don't listen to you because they think they know just as much as you because you the same age. Okay. If people are younger than you and they think you're, you know, oh, you out of touch, then you miss them that way. But I found that everybody kind of listens to a 65 year old. They're okay. like, oh, they're, they're so like, you're just gonna say that even though I'm obviously you look like you're about 35. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the reason why I was asking is I'm 45, and okay. uh, man, I, I you look so good for 45. No, 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 but it's it's for real though. I'm 45. But you no really doubt. look, yo, man. <laughs> it's just fat, man. It's fat. Like you know, fat makes you look young. Well, pleasant. It makes you yeah. look pleasant. Yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> But, you know, I grew I mean, I grew up in the 80s. That's what I was going to say to you. And I grew up in New York City, specifically Far Rockaway, New York. Anyone right. who knows about New York, Far Rockaway is not a not a joke. Yeah. And it wasn't in the 80s. I mean, that that was like, you know, the crack 80s. And I grew up in that. So I, I understand where you're coming from. And even though I was a nerdy kid, I was born outside of America and all of that. You know, you you wind up in that situation mm -hmm. and it changes you so much. Right. You know, and, and it starts to influence you. And like you said, you know, you're doing things that you know that are wrong and um, you have to find a way to, to take yourself out of that. So I understand where you're coming from with that. Right. right. I just think that it's also very important. The position that I find myself in now doing this work, I have to explain more than I usually do explain because I have people that are looking for guidance. Some of, some of those guys are older than me. Some of those guys and women are younger than me. You know, right. um, they need to hear that I'm, 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 I'm just like them. They need to hear right. that when you when you try to there's a difference between elevating yourself to, you know, um, gain more knowledge, gain more resources, gain more wealth, gain more appreciation and things like that. But when you do it to the extent that you're, you know, almost thumbing your nose up at people that you just came from the same block. It's, it's, it's not it's a recipe for disaster, you know, not even like somebody will do something to you, but just more along the lines of you can't really reach minds. You got to reach back, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm that far ahead of everyone, but it's like mentally oh, I'm light years beyond where I was light well, years. Of, right. I think one of the problems for us, you know, and, and you know, I don't want to focus on this, but we are two black people, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, w one of the problems I find that a lot of black people have is. Um, the the uh, first of all, a lot of black people are into guns. Some of them for criminal reasons, and then other people are into guns or would like to be into guns for protection reasons. But what happens to a lot of people, specifically, it happened to my wife. She thought the guns were only for the bad guys. Uh -huh. You know, and we we have to try to change that. And it's not the easiest thing in the world when it's someone who you think is outside of who you are. You know, right. and all the different ways that that could be, not right. just the things that relate to skin color. But when someone's outside of that, it's very difficult to change it because 
you know, you have this, you're almost like programmed, you're almost brainwashed right. into something, you know? You are brainwashed, you are conditioned, and I want more people to recognize their own conditioning. I want more people to recognize that you in a matrix, and until you unplug yourself, or until you have assistance in becoming unplugged, mm -hmm. you a battery, bro. Yeah. Like, you, you a battery, straight up. Not even to even rejuvenate yourself. You're there to replenish a system, good or bad, right, wrong, or indifferent. You're just a battery, and you can re re readjust your thinking and realign your perception based on unplugging a bit and accepting yeah. some, 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 uh, some guidance from people that might be, again, close to your age, older than you, younger right. than you. You got to be able to see them signs, you know? And, and again, that's just facts. Like, we, we can, that level of conditioning, we, our, our parents do it to, to us, you know, because of their conditioning. You know, it's even down to the voting. We vote out of, in the hood, we vote out of, you know, fear or tradition. Yeah. I got to vote this way because that other person's going to do this. Or, well, my mom and my dad voted this way and blah, 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 blah. You know, so it's a certain level of condition. And the people that do it to us, they care for us. They don't really know, they don't really know that's what they're doing because they're giving us the best of what they think is the best. You know, but... It's generational, it's generational generation. programming, man. Yep. It's generational. Just like there's generational wealth, there's generational programming for people that um, keep them in slavery. You know, Bob Marley said, you know, uh, only you can free yourself yourself from mental slavery. Right. You know, right. um, and, and here's the thing, like uh, I had this conversation one time with a guy in the barbershop. There was like this real thugged out looking dude, you yeah. know, lots of tattoos and all that kind of stuff. And we were talking and he was telling me about you know how we have conversations in the in the barbershop. I, yeah. I know you got dread, so I don't know how, when's the last I go time. The, I get a shape up in the shade, <laughs> yeah. though. I can't tell right now, but I, yeah, I've, yeah. I've been there. Yeah, you look, you're looking real, real thugged out right now. <laughs> but, you know, so we had this conversation, and what really tripped me off is this guy was trying to tell me that even in the hood, the drug dealers look out for the hood, and they look out for the people in the hood. And I, and I understand where he was coming from, but I took exception with that, and I told him, well, I don't think you're looking out for the people in the hood when you're selling them drugs. You know, when you're if you're making their uncle a, a crackhead or if you're you're involved in that, making them a crackhead and they're stealing things and you're protecting your territory and therefore killing people and all that kind of stuff. You're not help. You're not helping the hood. You just think you are. And maybe people think you are, but ultimately you're not. Yes and no. They are and they aren't. And it's, it's, it's multiple levels to that because in that case, I don't think that big tobacco is helping America or the world because right. clearly we can see what cancer does. We, we can see the effects of smoking easy. You know what I'm saying? Every right. year, annually. Um, but the, the jobs that are created and when, when those guys say that, you know, they're they looking out, they're looking out for the, the special, which is a lot of times very rare. You have exceptional cases of people that go, you know, the dope boy that's like, look, man, you get inside. I'm going to get your sneakers for the, for the basketball game. or yeah. the football. I'm going to get your cleats. But right. you are not supposed to be here for whatever reason you're here. I got the resources to keep you away from this scenario just because you live up the street. But I don't want right. to see you out here, you know, and those and those aspects. Yes. I personally am of the belief that if you want to if you want to shoot heroin, I believe in freedom. You know what heroin does to you. If you don't know, Google and YouTube exists. If you want to shoot heroin up, you should be able to shoot heroin up. I think that places that decriminalize you know drugs generally have lower crime, have lower homicides, have lower this, that, and the third. So it's just a matter of perception. Yeah, that's true. I, I think believe... there's a whole industry built around the drug game. For sure, for sure. The prison industrial complex in the 80s. I mean, since, you know, late 80s, early 90s, since, you know, Clinton did his thing. Yeah, New York I mean, specifically. I mean, New York, you, you, um, you got 20 years just for one vial of crack. Right. And it's like, come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all. And then, we, so we just going to ignore the whole Iran-Contra shit? We just gonna ignore that. <laughs> We're gonna ignore the whole setup. We're gonna ignore the socioeconomic conditions. We're not gonna treat it like it's a it's a it's a health disorder like crystal meth is being handled now. So we just we just gonna ignore that part. Everybody yeah. I don't own no poppy fields, but I just, you know, this is just right. you know, you know, so yeah. it's I think it has to be a holistic approach. And I think under that holistic approach, then you'd have more people taking, you know, stock in, damn, do I wanna shoot heroin up? You know, and because your life is falling, you're not even going to go to jail and be housed. 
at that point, because it's like, okay, well, you're just a heroin addict and you'll just be homeless now because we as the state aren't going to like prop you up, you know? So um, I think, I think that a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of government interference, interference in things that they should not be interfering in. And I believe that the choices that a human makes to, to make their body healthy or unhealthy, because that's really all it is, good health and bad health. I think the choices that they make should, is, is up to the actual freedom of the person. Um, right. Me, I'm not shooting no heroin. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. No, I'm not giving control to any other thing or person unless I can absolutely, you know, unless I have no choice. Right. And then that is slavery. <laughs> right. And then it's like, okay, well, I, I kind of had to shoot the heroin, but, you mm-hmm. know, I'd rather not shoot heroin, you know. So I, I get those guys' perspective. They, they have a limited view, though, because they don't see how they, f- you know, fodder for the 13th Amendment, you know. So. It's, it's, it's perspective, too, but I, I get what they're saying, and I also get what you're saying, too, because now when you're talking about we're going to spray this whole block just because we don't even want them there, never mind the fact that several young children that are totally innocent going to get hit up in that, in that space, you're not helping our community at all. You right. are part of the scumbag complex, you know, so... Right. Yeah, there's, it's one thing to be an entrepreneur, you know, and then obviously, like you said, some things should not be illegal. You know, we went through that with prohibition in America. Right. Um, it seems like uh, the prohibition on drugs like uh, marijuana and stuff like that, which I, I don't do drugs, you know, mm-hmm. uh, unless I have to, you know, when, when we're talking about like medications that are prescribed to me. I don't even like those. Right. You know, so. Hey, that, you that, 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 stop lying. Huh? Huh? You smoke, Hank. Stop lying. No, never have. You know what happened? Wait, 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 wait. Hank, you never smoked. Oh, no. wait. No, no. Okay, wait. I mean. Yes. Okay, I get you. Right. 4473. <laughs> no, well, okay. Listen, since we're, we're, we're doing real talk, I'll tell you. You know, I mean, first of all, I'm from the Caribbean. I was born in Guyana. Okay. And, uh, you know, we moved around the planet a little bit. But my dad, you know, he he did all that stuff, man. Okay. You name it, he did it. He drank, he smoked, he did, you know, he smoked weed, he did all that kind of stuff. And he was really wild. So, you know, I think for me that I grew up, you know, just seeing that every day and the effect that it had, and it just just flipped me in the, the other way around. So even though I grew up in the crack 80s, like I'm telling you, right. you know, I didn't participate in those things just because I saw the effect that it had on, you know, my mother and the rest of the family and all that kind of stuff of, right. of what my dad was doing. You know, he's he's reformed since then but it was pretty tough so yeah that's completely kept me away from it i'm not knocking anyone for doing what they do you know like you said man you have the right you know you can decide to destroy yourself if you want to right your your matrix you 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 were unplugged then by his choices and sometimes that's the best way to learn from other people's mistakes like oh that happened oh yeah I'm, i'm not i'm not fucking with that Yeah. And also the other thing that happened for me, you know, I'm not like in this whole gun game. I didn't come from a military point of view or law enforcement. I'm really an artist. That's what I am. An artist, storyteller, filmmaker, uh, broadcaster. I'm an artist. And I always found that art creativity was was how I got high. That was my escape. Right. That's that's really cliche, but it's amazing. So. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's true. And, you know, I mean, you're, you're an artist as well. Right, you know, right. you, you no, do music. You know, to be totally honest, though, sometimes when you're in that space, I'm, I remember right. I don't remember. I have a song on one of my projects called Metaphysics. I have absolutely no recollection of how I wrote that song. It just okay. it, it was just like. So wait, wait a second. Have you. So uh, did you smoke something or. Let me flip that back on 4473. you. Forty-four seventy-three. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I feel you. I, <laughs> no, <laughs> I am right. not under the influence of any illegal on the federal or state level. Wow, you subject. got you got it memorized. <laughs> I can see every time you come to that point on the form, you're like reading it out. Like, let me see if there's a loophole. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, nah, but yeah, and that song was very, it was, it was one of those states of, you know, there's a certain form of a high, like runners have a certain runner's high. There's a certain level of clarity that came with that. And I, I remember that. And, and so I definitely, I mean, I'm making light of it. Oh, it's cliche, but it's so not. Yeah. It's, it's just real trap. It's like, there's a, there's a, there's an opening where it's you in that zone. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like Kobe when he hit 81. It's like, yeah. I can't. You can't, can't help miss, it. you know, yeah. there's a high that comes from that. Yeah. Now, people who are watching this may not know. I was listening. You're, you're on SoundCloud, right? So if, if folks want to 
if they're interested in the music that you do, I believe it's SoundCloud slash Mad. No, it's I, th- I think it's CD Baby CD Baby dot com backslash Maj Toure. Toure. Okay, cool. Yeah, everybody uh, should go listen to Metaphysics. That is a really good song. Right. Yeah. And and here's the thing that I find. I mean, I, I dabbled in a little bit of hip hop in my time. That's where Hank Strange comes from. Okay. So, you know, I've produced some independent stuff. I, I'm not necessarily a rapper myself, but I produced it. And I, I find myself like if I listen to a really good beat, I can't help it. I'm actually in my phone writing down lyrics. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm an old man and I'm still doing that, you know, but because no, but here's the thing. That is a that creativity is always gonna we gonna eternally be young, in that sense. That, I think that I think that's another part of that conditioning thing where they go, oh well, if you if you over this age, you're not supposed to still be creative anymore. You're still not supposed. There's an expression. There's a there's a truth that resonates that all of us can feel. That's why the most powerful artists it feels like they're talking your life because that truth. Regardless of if Jay Z is you know fifty years old, it doesn't matter. That truth yeah. resonates. Absolutely. You know, I think that's another part of the trick to keep us segmented. Where why does it have to now be an old school hip hop concert? A lot of them songs are way better than the ones that I hear now, and some of them new are way better than the ones from back. From back just, in the days, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, yeah creativity you know, is creativity. You know it when you, when you hear it. Right. You know, there's some there's some crap out there, but back in the days there was some crap out there too. Yeah. Right. I, I wasn't rocking with skinny jeans then. I don't think they're cool now. So, right. yeah. you know. so you know, let's talk about this. I mean, let's let's like try to explain to people the before we get into other stuff here. What's the arc? I mean, where did you start from and how did you wind up with Black Guns Matter and how did you wind up an activist? We uh, one all of my friends catch the same case. Doesn't matter what part of the country that they in. If they in the hood, they're going to catch the possession charge. If they got some cases before, a drug charge, then they right. get caught with the burner again, they're gonna get the possession charge. And it's like, man, I have so many homies that I'm like, dude, you just had to get the paperwork. Like, I think it's, I think it's bullshit, but it's, it's okay, at least that part, we can beat that part until right. we overturn the need for this, until every state is constitutional carry. Um, and seeing that, I was like, yo, me and my team, we was just like, yo, what if we had like a, a license to carry drive like we just got everybody from the hood to just come out and so we could tell them like all at once yo it's twenty dollars in philly a little bit of paperwork let's go you yeah. know because people will start asking a question and um so we had one like two years ago and um the the spot was packed it was packed i mean we fed everybody this is another thing that you was talking about law enforcement i remember at that event <laughs> Some of my friends, you know, they got tattoos on their face. They, you know, they're scary guys. Right, and right. So they come to the door smelling like a pound. And they're like, I'm like, yo, what's up, baby? <laughs> Why are you? Da, 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 da. For and, everyone um, who doesn't know that, they smell like weed. Right. They, yeah. they smell like weed. And so yeah. um, we had law enforcement in there, retired, you know, uh, state troopers, present day law enforcement. Mm-hmm. But they were in plain clothes. And you know, we could we could tell you a cop, we look at you. Your clothes are you're very you square. I can tell. You still wearing everything is still to spec. Mm-hmm. So um my homies is like, yo, you know there's cops in there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's good. We good here. And uh yo, you know, you know, I got you know I got that thing on me. And I'm <laughs> like, everybody in here has that thing on them. Come in. And so I saw, you know, the law enforcement size up my friends, and my friends saw size up law enforcement. We go through the class, end of the class, the regular people leave, the gun people come out. You know, right. those same two guys, cop, my friend, got their guns out, and they, my homie is telling him, yeah, I got, this is CMC trigger. I, what, da, 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 da. And he's like, oh, so wait, you mean to tell me that? Da, da? He's like, nah, man, your trigger pulled a little too light. I mean, <laughs> you, I'm t- like, like. And they weren't, they weren't scared these guys were going to, like, you know. Nope. Run their ticket or something like that? Nope, because, and that's what we learned from that class. Mm -hmm. What we learned was, one, like you said, guns are a unifying factor. Mm -hmm. And two, we learned a few things. Two, the second thing being, oh, we can break a lot of these stigmas. We can break these. We just need somebody like me that is in full understanding and in relation to both sides. 
Right. And we got to just have meeting spaces where both sides understand that, look, since we want to talk about safe spaces, we're going to talk about there's no judgment. You're not going to ask him none of that about his gun. You're not going to trip because he a cop. Right. Not I mean, so, so how do we how do we square those two things? I mean, if you've got someone that's a criminal, they probably have a record, you know, maybe felonies and they may they probably, you know, it would be illegal for them to own these things versus, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the Second Amendment and trying to encourage people to, you know, come into the fold. How, how do we square that? I mean, does, does, from what you're doing, do you find that you're making people more law abiding? You know, I'm sure there's people out there saying, well, yeah, we don't, do we necessarily want to teach people who we feel are criminals? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. One, we already doing it in that sense. We teach, or we teach them how to do it wrong by not getting involved. Just simple right. and plain. I mean, I say this one all the time. I can literally go get a gun whenever I feel like it. I ain't got to fill shit out. Yeah. But and, what, now, and whatever you want. Whenever I want. Yeah, and, and, whatever, and whatever you and, want. Oh, yeah, and whatever. I mean, I got homies, little homies that got guns bigger than small children. That's, mm -hmm. not, that's not hard. But the thing is, we talk, but the gun isn't the actual problem. The gun is the, the problem is the mentality of the person that gets behind the gun of that small child. So for me to further alienate that person because I'm calling him a criminal, when in reality, if the founding fathers of America would have lost, they would have been hung for treason because they would have been criminals. Right. How dare I, in the city of Philadelphia, how dare I do the same with my background as a reformed scumbag, how dare I judge that man? At best, I can say, listen, in this place, we're not going to do that. However, I'm not going to judge you. And on top of that, if nothing else, if I can't get you out the street, if nothing else, please at least allow me to show you how to properly secure your firearm so your children or somebody else's children don't get access right. to it. Because there's a separation of, uh, you know, there's a separation of someone being, you know, having the right to defend themselves and then someone using a, a tool to commit a crime. Right. Right. There's a right. separation there that, that we have to, I know it sounds, it, it probably sounds crazy to people. Um, I'm sure that it sounds crazy to people out there. It, it but sounds we have to crazy. separate that. It sounds crazy to them if they're not, if, 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 if they're being closed minded to their own matrix. Right. There's levels to this and on everything, including conditioning. So yes, you got out of one matrix of guns are bad, probably because your parents or somebody in your environment put you on that path. Now you got to get past the concept that subtly, subtly, especially if you're from a rural or suburban area, right. subtly somebody put in your mind that those people over there in Chicago are above fixing. And mm -hmm. never to deal with, again, none of the socioeconomic or conditioning or different things that the people at the top, a lot of, not all of, a lot of the people at top are making continue to keep people separate. You got to get out of that conditioning. You right. know, that's why in our classes, we deal with conflict resolution. We deal with de-escalation tactics. We deal with the law. Mm -hmm. We deal with all of those things, and the firearm come last. Okay, we'll get you the basic understanding of safety and proper handling, proper, proper storage, and all those yeah. different, different things. But bigger than that is we got to create a culture of informed people that don't feel judged because they grew up in Compton. And, you know, all of their, their closest people, their family was gone, but the closest people in their lives was Crips and Bloods, and it took them in under their fold. Mm -hmm. Why are we looking at, the, oh, they're gangbangers. No, nah, this, this is my family. Well, I didn't right. have nothing. They gave me $20 to get something for me and my sister to eat. This is the world that, this is the world that they were born into. I mean, right. that, that's the reality of it. And if you bring them to something like the Second Amendment, this is a gateway drug to show them the freedoms that they do have in America. You know, and you can... It Go ahead. Makes, in our experience, it makes that person go from a, a, a parasite to the community, to the hood, to America. It turns them into the warrior class, blue collar, hardworking people that will be patriots for our nation, period. Right. Yeah, you know? I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. Look, I always tell people. I think everyone should have guns and they're like, well, what about criminals? What about this? But I can't, there's nothing I could do to stop that anyway. Right. You know, um, in that moment when someone tries to take, cause I, I believe that you don't have anything you can't defend. So if someone's trying to take away my freedom in that moment that I have to defend my freedom, you know, the, the lives of, of myself, my family, people that I care about, 
I just want the ability to do that. The, the other things that people worry about, I can't do anything about. You're right. There's a, it's, it's not, and, and the people that fall into this category don't look like what we all think they look like. Sure, yeah. they do look like us. They do look like black guys, but they go across the spectrum. You've got white, blonde, blue-eyed people who fall into this that there's things that, you know, laws and stuff like that or, or things they don't want to follow, but they have reasons that they want to defend themselves, right? The thing, absolutely. And the thing of the matter is we, we can get, when you want to get to something, you get to the natural genesis of it. You get to the origin. The origin of America, there's a few documents. We've been working kind of cool. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights. I mean, they literally doubled down to remind you, hey, this is how you and your human rights protect against tyrannical governments, tyrannical people, this is how you promote and expand on justice. It's literally a blueprint. So right. now you and, and why did they have to do it? They had to do it because I mean, people never had to do this before. You never had to, you know, if you go way back in the days, if you go back to the first weapons, you know, rocks, knives, swords, bows and arrows, you never had to have a permit until someone decided, yeah, I don't want these I don't want these particular guys to have a right. weapon. Right. And that's where it becomes game. So the hood is relating to what we're doing because they understand that very thoroughly. I, hey, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the worst place. I'm in the worst place in America. I'll say it that way because our worst is not some other places worse. But right. I'm in the worst place. I'm in dire conditions. My conditioning has, you know, trained me as such. How do I defend myself? Now, are we saying that entire demographic? And we ain't even talking about black. I'm, right now, I'm not even talking about black people. Right. I'm talking about white people that might be in eight mile. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking mm -hmm. about backwoods, you know, dirt road, poor country. Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. Country moonshine creators back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So with that being the case, these poor people don't have the right to defend themselves. These poor people in Chicago don't have the right to defend themselves because every gang member that I just mentioned ain't this, you know, great guy that's just doing some things to take care of his a few people that fell by the wayside. Every gang member ain't that guy neither. There's some right. people across all ends of the spectrum that are just horrible people. And I have the right to defend myself from those horrible people, you know? And I think it's, I think it's about high time that, you know, saying that to say that the, the, short, the shorter version to the answer is, we just saw that there was a way that there was information that was missing. So we wanted to create a, a, a license to carry drive. When we right, did right. that, so many people kept saying, yo, man, I, I came across the bridge. I'm from such and such. I'm from Jersey. I'm just up here from such and such. We need this in our town. And so we was like, yo, we should do a 13 city tour. And we did it. And we ran through those cities. And then more people kept saying, yo, I, you came to Boston? You got to come back. Or I, I actually live in such and such. So this was all before you had the moniker of Black Guns Matter? Yep. Okay. We just did a license to carry drive. Mm -hmm. And then, well, not 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 necessarily because we called the first one that, but okay. then we was like, "Yo, we need to, we need to like, this phrase is powerful." And then people started asking us like, "Well, what does that mean?" You know, the Black Lives Matter movement. A lot of their thing was this. That's a surrender position. I don't ever surrender, <laughs> ever. It's just not. It's I'm like Leonidas. It's just my the way that my DNA is set up. I can't. I'm not. You gotta you gotta beat me into a loss there's never going to be a submission so right. this is not something that so with that being the case we were like well i don't really care if anybody else don't think my life matter i don't i'm not even thinking about it you know what right. i mean mm -hmm. i'm going so, to show so, you that so, my life matters if you try to take it you know right. and so black guns matter because i'm okay. not doing this right so so the name obviously had something to do with the black lives matter movement mm -hmm. as a counter to that not necessarily a counter, okay? Because we're not in opposition to the to the conditions that made a Black Lives Matter even have to exist, okay? But if, if we're pretending like police brutality and terror in the community ain't happening, you are a liar or you are Ray Charles, dead and blind. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, the police officers I speak to, they, uh, you know, police officers abuse police officers, right? And do wrong things, you know, like in in all of society, there's there's 
no matter what job you have, you have bad people in that job. Right. So right. overall, this like the job of law enforcement of being a this is something we invented as people, as right. a civilization, as a community. We we invent this thing. We said, hey, we need someone to to serve in this role, and then we hire people. We put them in that role. They're not all good guys, right. and the ones that are bad guys, we have to do something about. And the one that the ones that are good guys, we we have to do something about as well. We have to defend the ones that are good, and we have right. to condemn the ones that are bad guys exactly. and that goes that goes for like people like me and you but that also goes for police officers as well when there's bad police officers they need to step up and say this guy's a bad guy we don't right. agree with what he does right and and they're in a much more uh posi a much better position of power to do that because it could just look like we complaining so on one hand it's if those black lives matter organization says hey this isn't right. right we're peacefully protesting and we're doing this then their t-shirts start popping off. Then everybody has the t-shirt. Now, as soon as one person does something silly with the t-shirt, the media goes, see those Black Lives Matter people are crazy. Now that's the spin. The reality mm -hmm. is you still got to address the reason why this organization was even invented. Right. If you're, you know what I mean? You could, you could point the finger at somebody else, right. but you got, you got to look at all of that. So yeah, um, I mean, I think, I think, you know, for the part of like, there's some, Here's something I think that happened, right? And this is just my perception. I think there's a lot of gun guys that really took on your cause because of the name, because right. it was a counter to mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, because they're like, well, what does this mean? That only Black Lives Matter and like brown lives don't matter and white lives don't matter. And, the, you know, I mean, you know, we're, we're putting each other on a spectrum, obviously. And the, the it's this funny crazy thing about how the news media works as well where you think that you're just hearing that police officers are killing black people you know it the, obviously there's some uh you know disproportionate statistics and things like that out there but there, there's things going down in lots of in for for people across the spectrum i think and so there were guys out there that are like well what does this mean you know what why are these people Every time you do something, and, and you know this is a reality, so every time you do something as a black person, there's other people that are out there like, well, why does it got to be all about the black people? Why can't we, you know, all get together? And, and I think that, like you said before, with the thing about, you know, the drug dealers taking care of the hood, that's not really a simple answer. I mean, right. we, we're born in this skin and we have to deal with that. Well, I think that, one, I love the skin that I'm born in. I got melanin. I, I mean, like, I'm not really tripping off that. My issue is breaking the conditioning of people that would have you believe that your skin is a, a, a negative, because it's not. I mean, nor nor would, would I believe that it makes someone superior because of whatever skin that they particularly think, white, black, brown, this is the yeah. superior one. Right. Um, with that being the case, I believe in superior and supreme choices and justice. You know what I mean? My name is Maj. My eye aligns justice, the ancient Egyptian, you know, goddess of balance and justice. I'm the, I've identified myself after a female, the supreme being. So with that being the case, that's what that's that's the square I stand on. And I'm gonna build my pyramid from that perspective. Anyone of any uh, melanin content, lack thereof, that has that same square that they building on is my brother or my sister. Period. That's how I view it. Right. Now, when you get to more bigoted, biased, you know, mentalities that pick one side or the other and then choose to harm people that they identify as the opposite, then I got to call bullshit on that. And I got to go, nah, bro. Sorry. Yeah. You know, now when it, when it's this we run into walls, right? That's where we right. run into walls and we can't, uh, we lose the ability to communicate with each other and un right. understand each other. Right. And when that happens, I think our organization is making those great strides very quickly because we stand on an objectivity position. We stand on a, yo, he's a cool guy. Yo, he's a dickhead. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just what it is. And because of that, we're able to, A, call out clear racism without looking like we whining right. and call out, nah, that's not racism, bro. You, you, that's just, he's a jerk. Or you're crying racism for something that isn't even racism because you don't want to acknowledge what you did wrong. You right. know what I mean? And by yeah. maintaining that objective, neutral ground, we're able to get love and give love from a, a, that, same, that same truth and genuine place that resonates. And that's the type of healing that's necessary to break the, the, the conditioning 
which allows us to get our minds right. So when we get to a firearm or our human right via the Second Amendment, we sound solid people. Our approach is very holistic. This ain't a fucking accident. Right. You know what I'm saying? I understand like, where you're coming from. You feel me? So mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and it's been working for us very, you know, very well because that's why we have so many white supporters. That's why we have so many Asian supporters. That's why we have so many poor supporters. That's why we I'm on the phone with multimillionaires that just want to talk because they're like, yo, your approach, I don't even I didn't even know how to touch into your market because I didn't want to offend anybody. But your approach is so refreshing. And that's what's needed. These people that we admire, you know, uh, give me liberty or give me death by any means necessary. You know, uh, 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 I have a dream, you know, uh, be the change that you want to see in the world. These people had a very objective and holistic mindset. And a lot of times lately, from what I see, that's the one area that has been missing in our gun culture. Mm -hmm. you know, where and when we need it the most, because the other side suffers from none of that they're going to use anybody and everybody that they can to get that anti-gun gen agenda a pop. Right, so elaborate on that. I mean, what, what, you know, let's dig into that specifically. What, what do you mean by that? In the sense of uh, the anti-gun people? Yeah, well, you, say, you said this is missing in our gun culture. Oh, for sure. We are leading with ego. We are leading with, and I say we. I try not to, but I'm in it. So, no, I, I, I happen to agree with you. So, you know but I want to hear it from your mouth. We lead with ego. We lead with, I've been doing this for such and such a long and how he going to come along and how we're coming along and making this great impact that we would love to be a part of you, you to be a part of is because we're actually dealing with people. Well, you have all of this specialized knowledge that I do not have about firearms, all, you know, every caliber, you know, everything, right? No one wants to deal with you because you're a jerk. Or so, or something else is missing. I think there's there's like something going on that people think like, well, you know, I've paid my dues. I have this badge. I've so many, um, you know, certifications. Yeah, things for this thing, and then you sh and and so you should automatically give me this position. And that's not really how it works. I think nope. people have to understand that you create something, or you put something, or project something out into the world, and then people choose. Yeah, you know, people they choose, choose that, and right? they go. Eh, I kind of like Maj or eh, I kind of like this girl or this guy. And that's yeah. fine. That's the free market. Right. That's the market. They have the right to do that, you know, but um, I think that that holistically, that holistic approach for the most part is what ha in my experience is what has been, has been um, missing. I'll give you a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Some of my friends um, are what's called five percenters. You okay. know, five five percenters believe that, you know, we are the physical embodiment of a God. And I get it right. because of the yeah. fact that, you know, Allah, yeah. arm, leg, leg, arm, head. Arm, right. leg, leg. Grew up in New York, man. You preach Boom, it. You get it. But I know, I know there's some, some people out there that are like, that what? don't. They're like, yeah. what? Google it right now. That's right. what I can it's tell not. you. Google it. I yeah. self, Lord and master. And I get that. And I, I, I like that thought process because that means everything is my fault. That means I can control my environment, me. Right. I, the choices that I make, righteous or, you know, negative, are... Yeah, if something's not going right, it starts with me. I got to fix that, you know? Right. Um, with that being the case, they have so much knowledge. The sun is 93 million miles from the earth. The da -da 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 -da, all of this stuff, they can run it down. They can tell you they 120. They can tell you all of that stuff. Where's the love at, though, brother? Where's the, where's the love? I mean, I, I mean that, that permeating feeling of embrace stats are cold mm -hmm. you know but the, right. the love and the communal nature and the support and you know that's what yeah, look, look it's like when you sell you know i always have this discussion with people if you're selling something you're not really selling that thing that object right you know, or someone's not buying that thing or that object from you they could buy it from anyone when they right. buy something from you they buy you Right. And whether that's real or genuine and whether they have the ability to gauge whether you're real or genuine, that's what it is. And and mostly that ability is something almost, uh, you know, it, it's it's almost like a sixth sense or something yeah. like that. And they can it's feel whether primal. or not you're real. Yeah, it's very primal. You can't fake energy. Right. You can't fake energy. You know what I'm saying? And it may be a miscommunication of what this energy is coming from, but it's, 
it might be a little different. I mean, if it's the street vibes, energy, the, the my yoga people call it energy and the ether, and right. all I'm saying is trust that shit. Yeah. So you know I mean, I think I think where you're going here with this, you know, um, and uh, looking into your background a little bit here, I see that you know you're getting a lot of press, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen you in a lot of different places. And obviously there's, you know, we're not the only one. So, you know, referring back again to us being like black guys who are pro second amendment. Are you a conservative? I, I saw that, you know, somewhere. I don't know. Labeled I, you I, as a conservative. I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't even know. Like I, I pick certain things I agree with the other yeah. shit. I'll be like, I don't agree right. with that. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't like the, I don't like the boxes that we're all putting <laughs> ourselves in like that. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so is that, you know, so being in that position where you're getting a lot of spotlight and people are coming to you for the reasons that they're coming to you, um, do you feel like you're getting a lot of hate? You know, um, I, I, I see some questions here. We're getting some questions on, on folks hanging out there. They want to know what's your take on the, what they call the range theatrics, Instagram call outs. And, you know, obviously there's some, there's some infighting going on here inside of the black gun community. Uh -huh. we, we, we know that there's infighting going on in the gun community. So what's your take on that? I want to talk about that just a little bit. I'm, I'm not getting hate. I'm getting misguided love. Um, first, I'll say this. Court documents are public. And I've also, I did catch a, a first off, let's, let's, let, I'll run through the whole game. Yeah, yeah, break it down, man. You got all the time you need. Let's break it down. Yeah. I got charged for a crime that, that I think that that page is the range page. Mm -hmm. They put that up. I got charged for something. I met a girl at a nightclub Tw and I've spoken about this, I think on a Baraka show. Uh, yeah. Anyway, shout out to Baraka James. Um, I was in a, I was in a nightclub, you know, lounge 21 and older. I met a young lady. She's bigger than me. We, we exchange numbers. Woo, woo, woo. Few days later, I say, "Yo, you want to hang out?" She says, "Yeah." I said, "Well, listen, if you're not if you're not trying to be physical, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get with another shorty because that's where I'm at right now." She's no, it's okay, it's cool. She gets to my house, she sees some money I had laying around a watch, and I can see her. Yo, what kind of watch is that? Yo, you know, you I need some money. I, okay, I see what time it is. It's time to go. I put her out. She says, "You're not gonna give me no money. You're not gonna drive me home." No, nah, sis. I see where you're going with it. It's cool. I don't even want to be around. Honestly, I was thinking the quicker I get her out the house, the quicker I could get to the other shorty. Right. Okay. That was my thought process at that right. time. You, do, you were doing it by the numbers, obviously. It's a stat. It's a, it's a numbers game. Right. I understand. You know? And I know the, the number was still fresh. The other shorty. So anyway, she rips her shirt and she says, I'm going to tell him you raped me and I'm 16. Okay. I and am what, scared shitless. Was she 16? She was. Okay. Now, fortunately, because she was greedy, I never touched her. Okay. Ever. It would have went down. 21-year-old right. club, da 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 So I immediately get in contact with the club. Right, I mean, but wait, we're living in a world where whether you touched her or not, you know, an accusation, Is once those made. accusations are made. Now, here's the thing. It, mm -hmm. Well, in most, in, in a lot of states, more so than Pennsylvania where it happened, um, there's a thing called zero tolerance states, which is if mm. someone just utters under the age, if they could just call on the phone and say, hey, I'm at such and such, and Hank did such and such to me. Mm -hmm. If you're in Pennsylvania, you are going to catch the charge. So it's, you're not you're not innocent until proven guilty. You're guilty until you prove you're innocent. The yep. burden of proof is on you. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. In other cases, in any other case in Pennsylvania, the, the, the detective that's called to the case, the first is the police, then they give it to the detective. Detective looks through the information. They talk to you. They decide based on the information that they have if this case moves forward or going to the district attorney or they go, this is this is bullshit. Right. In a case with anything sexual related, it is not even up to the detective. It has to go to court. It has to. OK, so it goes right to prosecutors, right to the prosecutors, district attorney. Okay. You're catching this case. Boom. You catch mm -hmm. the case. Bam. You get the charge. Her father said, this is what my daughter does. If you need me to come to court for you, I will. He said, she probably won't show up at court. 
But you normally she'll get money out of the guys and she'll t threaten them. She's I said, I've seen my daughter do this. So I this said, is like this is a tool that she uses uh, her leverage yep. um, against men. And it's unfortunate because there are women who are truly victimized in our society. Um, you know, and and then there's people who use these laws that are in place to victimize other people. And, turn and there's around. no recourse for the person that gets charged. OK. There's no recourse. So I, I immediately got in contact with the club. If I catch a charge and if I go to jail, everybody's getting sued. You had her. I got pictures of her in the club, mm -hmm. in your club this night. Blah, 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 blah. Da, 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 da. They right. scared shitless too. Liquor licenses involved. All of this other stuff. Okay. And this was how long ago? This was, was, uh, was this, well, let me ask you this. Was this after you started Black Guns Matter? No, this was way before. Way before. How long way before? This was, this had to be six or seven, six or seven years ago. Okay. When, 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 I, when it went to court was six mm -hmm. or seven years ago. Right. Okay. So boom, of course you go through it. Doesn't show up. Doesn't show The judge is like, I'm, I'm throwing this out. This is, but, I, but it's a formality. You have to go through it. Judge right. throws it out. So the people that are saying these things, first and foremost, I have one misdemeanor that I'm convicted of for selling movies. Selling movies. So, that okay, hold on a second. So you were one of those dudes that was yep. selling bootleg movies? Yep. Okay. Everybody right. in Philly knows that. Right. Yeah. Saying this to say, this is why I never defend that. The, the, right. the thing that range theatrics and those other people are putting around, if you look on that thing, right. it says withdrawn. It says it. Okay. Literally. So you're talking about if we look on this um, rape charge that people yep. are referring to, it says yep. withdrawn. But the movie thing, that's the only thing that's there. I mean. That's the only. I have yeah. one in my entire life. I and I'm sure, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's some things that you have genuinely done that have you have not been caught or, you know. Or, or prosecuted I am not at liberty. Yeah, we don't want right. I, <laughs> exactly. I understand. And and you said that you know in the beginning of this, you said that you're a reformed scumbag. So it's mm -hmm. not like you're it's, you're not you're not pretending. You're not feigning to be like an angel or innocent. No. Coming into this, nobody, yeah. even these guys that are making these accusations and things like this, they mm -hmm. have far serious charges than me mm -hmm. that they've been convicted of. I right. have I, I plead pled guilty. To, I have I had ARD. ARD is a first offense program. Where so what does what does ARD mean? ARD means I don't know what the actual acronym stands for. Okay. But it's basically a program that when you have a first offense, mm -hmm. it was not the rape charge at all. You do not okay. get ARD for a rape charge. You get ARD for when you have this is your first time. I mean, again, this is six seven years ago. This is the mm -hmm. first time you caught a charge, mm -hmm. and we kind of want to like, hey, you. This ain't your lifestyle. We want to. Okay, you um, I'm not to cut you off. It stands yeah. for accelerated rehabilitative disposition. Bam. Is a special pretrial intervention program in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, United States, for nonviolent offenders with no prior or limited record. Bam. So when these guys are saying these things, when people go, Maj, why don't you defend yourself? There's nothing to defend against. All of my criminal record is right there. I got I got a misdemeanor for selling some movies. Right. That's it. So when people make this big hoopla, oh, he's this. Do we do we know what do what movies were these that you were selling? Yeah, I think were, it was. I, I think it was. I made a lot of money. Should, I think it was. Put, think, was this one specific movie that you were selling, or just a bunch of? No. If you get caught, they, like you, they'll be like they'll count the amount that you have, and they okay. go, oh, "Okay, you got to catch this case." Okay, you so the, we know that the film industry has beef with you. They got heavy Cause, beef. Because you're we, that guy. We, 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 out we, the you're the reason why we, when we watch a movie now, we have to see that blue FBI warning. It's all me. <laughs> it's you. It's me. It's on you. Okay. So, so, let, so, okay, go ahead. I'm going to let you finish what you were saying. So that happened. Case got thrown out. These guys are making up stories because I didn't come back to their town when they wanted me to for free. So they went and got my criminal history. Threw it. I have emails from these guys to other people saying, I'm going to destroy this guy on social media because he won't come so back now, to me. I, you, you're saying these guys, you're putting that in quotations. Um, you know, maybe you don't want to mention them, but, yeah. you know, can you can you give us some like who? who Roughly, are these people, if you don't want to name names or whatever? These, these are guys that, you know, 
Are these guys in the black gun community? That's Absolutely. Ask. Or this, or yeah, these, uh, this guy. I, I mean, the, the, the range, the range, the Instagram range theatrics, I don't know who that is. Okay. Their page, I can't really take seriously, though, because I looked at it. I block them. I, I throw a block party for everybody. You say too much weird right. shit to me on social media, I block you. Like, Okay, so have you gotten a lot of this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of hate from white groups? <laughs> or is it black groups? Is it a little bit? What, what kind, What's the percentages here yeah. on what you're seeing? Range theatrics. I've only gotten it from this one situation. Okay. I, I'm think the, the guys that follow the range theatrics page, I think they are... Um, I think they're mostly white, so those guys will like go to other people and be like, "You know, he's this right." And every everybody's already looked up my record and like they looked it up. So it's like, mm -hmm. dude, that's not true, and they don't even respond to it, you know. So um, that that that's where I kind of get it from those dudes. But those white dudes that say it did, they don't have like no pictures of themselves. It's like just it's they're just weirdo. So it's like, all right, cool. Okay. You know, you're, the, you're talking about the range theatrics people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know who those people are, but it's all good. I mean, right. they, okay. they, the funny thing, what they don't, they don't really know how social media works, though, because they're making me the, the topic of a lot of their discussions, and they ha they're actually helping us sell shirts, whether they know it or not. Right. Okay. Like that's that's the silly part of it. It's like I mean, I, the reason why I asked the question there, the, you know, is I'm I'm trying to you know gauge whether you're getting, you know, are you getting like what's your percentage of love hate from the you know, the white spectrum of the gun community versus the black spectrum. Because it seems to me like a lot of this hate that's coming, is coming from the, the black gun it is. community. It is. So I just want to find out what's going on there and why. The present hate that's coming is mostly from the black community because, I, I, again, that same conditioning. I understand that there's a certain level of, you know, I get it. I, I understand what the Willie Lynch mindset does. I understand conditioning. And I wish all of those brothers well. I wish right. all well. Well, they, here's, I mean, here's some of, some of those guys jumped out on bad information. Right. You know? Okay. And, like, and it's just a simple Google search. I mean, it's, it's, it's not even, it's not even large enough really to, I mean, there's, there's, there's other cities that we've done work with and those guys have checked my background beforehand and they're like, yo, your record is cleaner than mine. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, let's, okay. Let's touch on that real quick. So now, if you were, because I looked up the law, and anyone out there can, uh, I, I want to ask people out there to like, if you can, tell us about range theatrics if you know. But also, you can tell us about the laws in Philadelphia. You obviously know some of that. But yeah. if you were, if you were uh, convicted of a felony in Philadelphia, you would not be able to legally own and carry guns, right? No, that's not all okay. the way one hundred percent correct. Okay. All right. Because so, because it's state law first, in Pennsylvania. Okay. The, the felony would have had to be on that prohibit the prohibition list right or it would have to be something that uh, the sentencing holds over a year okay for that particular but if it's, it's the same thing as the four basically if, if people need from other places because you, you know your, your mm -hmm. uh, fan base is a little bit not just in Pennsylvania right it's a little bit past Pennsylvania but the 4473 is very similar to Pennsylvania law. Okay. You know, so if I had a violent offense, felony, if I had, yeah. you know, domestic, I think if it was like a, if it was a misdemeanor, but it was domestic, you would have problems. Right. And here's the thing. That's the mm -hmm. other thing that they say. They said, oh, he's his ARD is for beating on women. That's never happened. You are not getting an ARD for, for you just read the law. An ARD right. is for a first time nonviolent, a right. domestic, a violent abuse on a woman is not you're not getting a first hey we're going to just slap you on the wrist and give us ten dollars that's never right. going to happen so, so are you so are you a gun owner yes okay um i am not go ahead so are you a gun owner do you have a um i, I forgot what it's called in pennsylvania but do you have a license to carry concealed pennsylvania is an open carry state okay see and that's what i'm saying like mm -hmm. these are things that it's like if i responded to every time that somebody said and i understand why you're asking right you're asking i'm just i'm just trying to get to the to the meat of the situation out there people want to know things about you one of the things i'm trying to do with my platform that i have here is expose a lot of this because i agree with you there's some things going on inside the gun community um and and different facets you know there's so many different facets of the gun community to be honest with you i think that's the proof that guns are for everyone because you have all kinds of people in there and then we're all fighting with each other like crabs in a barrel and we're we're attacking each other and then people are attacking us from the outside and i'm trying to expose it so that we could stop it here's the thing 
all of these things, and this is another reason why I try to make what we're doing, people shouldn't be so worried about what individually Maj is doing. That's how we keep losing. Every time they chop the head off of the leadership, the body fall because nobody was thinking about the actual work. Everybody made it about one person. Yeah. It's also, if you, get, if you keep killing the messenger, there will be no messages sent. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, just him, just, and it's over. Just boom, yeah. him. Yeah. No one's so going like, to want to be a messenger if you kill the messenger, you know, every and single it, time. And it becomes a, a thing where it's like, yo, the work that we're doing at Black Guns Matter, Philadelphia had the lowest crime rate since 1979 and 2016. We did the bulk of our work in Philadelphia in 2016. The work is what matters. People, I mean, okay, I get it. I can speak well. Great, awesome. Right. So what? Uh, uh, is he dating Tommy Lauren? Laren? So what? It doesn't matter. So, so you can be mad I even, if I am. Because I don't even know what you're talking about. Nah, That's another no. room because oh, she's okay. weird. I don't need, now I have to go Google that. So you talk, and <laughs> I'm going to Google. <laughs> That's, what, That's the other Laren? room. It, okay. made it, it made it all the way to media takeout. Damn near TMZ. Tommy Lawrence dating Maj Touré. She's been seen with an African-American male. It made it all the way there. Yeah, Lola hates it when I Google images because, you know, then, then I get lost. I'm just, like, looking at all the images. Okay. So, all right. So Tommy Lauren, that's, like, a hot blonde chick. You but know, you get what I'm saying? That people and are saying you're guys, dating her. And are, yeah. are, you, are you trying to clear that up, that you're not dating her or you're not speaking doesn't on it? Matter. Or are you? The are point you? is this, Hank. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It does it. It does. And, that, and that's the thing. It's like, so now it's at a point I used to try to fight every rumor. Right. True or not. Right. So what kind of what kind of rumors are people hitting you with? Or do you just not even want to get into that? I mean, we, we don't have to. I mean, no. I, I've heard everything. I've heard I'm yeah. a devil worshiper. OK. It's like, OK, well, yeah. I've heard well, everything. I mean, I, it's, I, yeah, I mean, you know, I'd have to see video on that. I don't know if that, you know. I think I think I, think I, the, I believe in religious freedom, you know, so right. I, I mean, that falls yeah, under if, that. If, I think if you are, if you are, I believe that I believe in freedom generally. So because of that, whatever you want to do, if it's not affecting someone else's yeah. personal property or their physical well-being. Right. You know what's you know what happens, Maj? I think there's this weird thing that we do as human beings like. You know, um, we want to put people on a pedestal and then at the same time, like if someone's up on a pedestal, we want to pull them down. You know, we're, we're constant. We have this conflict, this battle, this struggle inside of us as human beings that we're constantly like putting people up, pulling them down. You know, we've I think we do it to make ourselves feel better and we get caught up in this stuff. And, you know, there's we just, do it. We, we no tend to it. do it because we, we we're we're it's entertainment. I, I guess, yeah. You, you, know. You, get, you know, you ever hear you? If every your listener should hear a song by Hov by Jay Z, it's called "Most Kings." You know, most kings get their heads cut off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so right. it's like, Hov, we need build me up to tear me down to build me up again. Hov, we need you back so we can kill your ass again. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's all for the entertainment. So for me, it's like, nah, I just don't. I just want to make it about the work. I just want to travel. Right. We on a we on a fifty state tour. We are blessed to be in a position where people even care enough to give their hard earned money to, for us to travel to the worst places in America mm -hmm. to inform the hood about things that you know they they, they need guidance. Yeah, on. I think I, I and and I'll and I'll tell you, I think that's more important than anything. I mean, here here's what I care about. Do you believe in the Second Amendment? Right. Yes, absolutely. And I, I believe that th there's been a disproportionate amount of people in urban environments, especially, um, that have been conditioned to believe that firearms are bad and you shouldn't have them or you're not supposed to have them. The reason why that is is because it's about control. Urban areas have the largest population. There's, there's a phone ringing. I'm sorry. There's, there's right. a phone here in the studio that they told me was never going to ring, and it's ringing. <laughs> it rings today. <laughs> it's the government calling. It's the government. <laughs> yeah. He's the movie guy. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we found hey, you. <laughs> keep him on the line, Hank. <laughs> yeah, Lola's going to handle that. Sorry. Go ahead, man. Nah, Go but ahead. it's like, you know, after the top, like, 10 cities mm -hmm. in population, you know, the population gets real light. You know, in those top 10 cities, you know, the, the New Yorks, the Los Angeles, the Atlantas, the Phillies, the Chicago's that, you know, that's where the highest concentration of gun control laws are that clearly aren't working mm -hmm. because that's where there's the highest amount of people. 
And if you're trying to control American people, you have to make sure that they don't have the ability to defend themselves. So that's why we want to go right. to those places. That's why we want to wake up that. We, we want to open up that market. We want to, we, when Michigan gets constitutional carry in a little bit, Rick, you know, Snyder, Governor Snyder, do the right thing there. Mm -hmm. When this has already made it through the house, you know, when, when that happens, we want to, we want to hit Detroit up. I want to get, I want to, I want to be able to call, you know, Chris Barrett from Barrett Rifles and be like, Chris, look, I found a little storefront in Detroit. Let's, let's create some jobs here. I, I found a small factory. Just put the money up, you know, and, and, and let us, let us do something out of there. I want to, that's how we make the hood great again. Right. You know what I mean? So that's where my concentration, where my people at, the people that I directly identify with. So how that's, are you going about that? I think you guys have a, um, what is it? You have a GoFundMe? Is that? Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So that's GoFundMe slash Black Guns yeah. Matter? GoFundMe.com backslash Black Guns Matter. Um, right. You can get to it from our website too, officialblackgunsmatter.com. If anybody mm -hmm. listening, you know, if I shed, it, I shed a little bit of light for you today, if you get to understand me a little bit, if it's about me at any level, if you understand a little bit more about me right now and, and, and the rumble that we in, okay, cool. You don't like me? Great. Cool. The work that we're doing is extremely important, though. There are conservative estimates, 20, 30 million Americans in urban areas, it's seven, eight million in New York alone, that if we can wake those people up, you may not like me, but you and I have something in common. It's the Second Amendment, and we losing. We, we making a little bit of headway, you know, because, you know, we making some. But, yeah, but if we lose, like, here's the thing, you know, the, the older people are unfortunately dying off, you know, and then younger people are coming along. And if we lose younger people, that's it. That's the future. That's how that's how progressives change things. You know, right. they're like, hey, over time, slowly, we could change this. And right. if we condition the young people to think that this is not a, a, a right that they need, that this is not something inalienable that they were born with, then we could take this thing away. And yep. uh, that's what that's why you have to fight the fight, right? Exactly. And that's the reason why I, we've made a commitment to our hoods. And when I say hood, I don't just mean you got to be in a concrete jungle. Mm -hmm. to, to your white listeners, I know y'all hear me right now. You, you, mm -hmm. you, you in a poor situation. You right. know what I'm saying? And you got to respect for the tool of firearms. You in the hood, my brother. You in the hood. We need to break the division. We need to break the silly shit that we fighting over. The other side, man, they tossing money. They, they collecting money hand over fist. They working with whatever they, they But listen, they I'll be I'll be honest emotions. with you. Look, I, I definitely have empathy for the hood, you know. At right. the same time, there's there's like hardworking people who live in the hood, or maybe they've, you know, they're trying to like get out of the hood. There's hardworking people out there that can't defend themselves. I mean, right. I grew up in New York City. I still have family there in New York. You know, you cannot legally defend yourself in, in New York. I mean, it's really, really difficult. Yes, right. you can get a license to have a rifle or even have a handgun in your home. You could maybe take it to the range. That's incredibly difficult to do. Uh, my brother that lives in New York was just able to do that, but he cannot conceal carry anything and right. can't defend himself every day. You know, right. I mean, I like I told you, I grew up in a time of, of, of Bernard Getz. You know, you can go look that up. And as a young black kid back in the 80s, when the Bernard Getz thing went down, you would think that, oh, I probably took the, the black guys that try to rob him. I probably took their side. No, I did it because, they, you know, people try to rob me, too. And I was like, damn, you know, I, I get it. That guy, you know, people come up to you and say, hey, what time is it? And you go look at your watch and they're like, Gosh. yeah, run that watch. Right. You know, run it. Or like people used to tell me, what are you going to do for that chain? Or what are you going to do for that Walkman? Believe it or not, back in the in those days, Walkmans were things that people died for, like people are dying for sneakers today. Right. So there's lots of good people out there in the hood, outside of the hood, black, white, that we're, we've all lost our freedom. And it's a big deal. And, and I'm telling you, 20, 30, 50 years from now, if you think it's bad today, there, there could be none of this. We could look like England, like France, etc. Or, or, or homegirl could have exercised the Australia option. You right. know what I'm saying? And it's like it's like that's the work, you know. So if you guys are hearing what we're saying and women are hearing what, what I'm saying right now, look, man, my 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 personal thing, man, that's that's so small. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. Every I hope everybody got the answer. You know, I got a misdemeanor for selling some movies. That's it. Let's move on. 
Yeah, well, you, you know, the thing about it is, is that this is how, like, the reason why I'm doing this, I mean, I, I just, I, I think you're, from, from our conversation, I can see you're an intelligent person, you're a good guy, I can tell from, from how we're bouncing, going back and forward, and even that you're answering my questions directly, I appreciate that, not everyone does that, as yeah. we all know, yeah. so, I mean, you know, but I think if, if you, if you, what I've found is if you're quiet about a lot of this stuff and you're being victimized and then you're quiet about it, you get victimized twice, right? Because these people are hitting you up and saying all these things about you and then you're not defending yourself. I, I don't think you should do it forever or whatever, but put it out there. And if people want to know, and if right. they have, if they have the attention span to spend the time, like, I don't know how long we've been going. It doesn't really matter to me if they have the time to actually listen to you. You know, right. this is kind of like a virtual way of people, you know, they're tuning in. It's just two dudes having a conversation, you know, like we would have in a bar or in a restaurant or something like that. And if they take the time to sit down and listen to you, then they can make that decision for themselves. Right. Right. That That's that's actually key. But then you, the people that are doing those things, there are people that have heard things and they'll call you. They'll say, hey, man. And I'll go, well, that's not what happened. And they'll go, right. oh, you know, oh, OK. Then there's other people that, you know, they just, they just, for whatever reason, they just want to keep it going. And that's cool. Those are the people I'm not saying, right. you know, uh, that I never addressed it because I did. And it's right. literally, you know, whatever. There's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to dwell on it. I want to hit this so we can go on and talk about other stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's some stuff about Isaiah Washington. And I think that people, you know, want me to ask you about that. Yeah, what's I'm going with it. on there. So, yeah. What's, what's one, the deal with that? What, what homie did was he tried to, I'll, I'll briefly run through it because I actually addressed this along with some other people that he tried to do the same thing to. Right. Isaiah when, Washington, for people who don't know out there, is a very popular black actor. At least he was like, you know, a couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. I mean, he, um, you know, if you if you search him on IMDb, you'll see that he's he's out there. So, so what he did was he he somehow got a, a hold of me when we were doing what we were doing in early, let's say uh, around the, November. Okay. And he got it. I got a call and somebody said, hey, he wants to meet you. Da, da, da. He offered help. Um, first and foremost, I addressed this on my YouTube channel. Okay. YouTube.com backslash Black Guns Matter. Black Guns it. Matter, guys. Go out there. Subscribe. <laughs> right, please. Matter, subscribe. please. Um, you know, follow, you're on Twitter. You're on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so I put that video out. But for just briefly, to, uh, he said he wanted to support what we were doing. Okay. I said, so okay, so, cool. so um, Isaiah Washington is... A gun guy? No. No. Okay. He, he now he's now presenting himself as and it's great. If he does start to go that way, great. You're on the path, guns, awesome. Okay. Great. All right. You no, know, right. I'm just a lot trying of to times, a lot of times actors have to, if they're doing an action movie or something like that, right. You know, they start to, you know, they gotta like like Keanu Reeves is amazing now. You right. know what I'm saying? And so saying that to say, so they have an introduction to things and that's great. Um, so now, yeah, maybe he is now. Um, so, and that's cool. Even if he isn't. A, Absolutely. A we want everyone to be gun guys. Right. Right. So, so, you know, um, yeah, that's that. But he basically said, Hey, I want to support. I told him, well, you can support with some merch. Da, 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 da. He said, okay, cool. He did that. And, uh, I said, well, look, just like I tell everybody else, donate the money, money to our GoFundMe. Right. And what he said, what he said was, well, no, I kind of want to be behind the scenes because of how he got let go off of the TV show Grey's Anatomy. He got fired from Grey's Anatomy for making homophobic slurs and calling some, and then they gave him another chance. Then he said right. the same thing at the, you know, on stage somewhere else. So they let him go. And right. what he said was, I saw that in Compton, you know, you work with a lot of, you know, the LB, you know, the, the gay community, Pink Pistols. And I'm like, yeah, he was like, so I don't want my thing for that to affect your thing. And I'm like, okay. that makes sense. So he sent money. He did this. Bought merchandise. He uh, he he said uh, you need to move. I said okay, cool. He got uh, he helped. Why, me. why did he say? Why did he say you need to move? He said I needed to move, just like the same reason that everybody else says I need to move. They said I need to move because I'm doing a lot of work and I can't be in the hood no more. And I'm like, right. I've been in the hood the whole time. I'm good. Okay. But, then but but they're trying to say that some things are location based. Like if we if you're getting on media a lot. You know, right. you, you need to be able to access certain studios and stuff like that if you're getting on Fox or that, that you know, and whatever they, it is, right? CNN. That, that and they just want don't want the dumb stuff to happen. So mm -hmm. I get it. They say that. Boom. Okay, cool. I'll do that. He became okay. a guarantor. A guarantor means somebody that says, hey, if this goes bad, you know, you'll handle it. 
He became a guarantor for an apartment complex. No, okay. no money, none of that other stuff. So then what he said was- So you moved, I, so you did move. I did move, I okay. did move because talking to my team, talking to everybody, it made sense. I said, okay, cool. I'm not too far from my hood anyway. Don't mm -hmm. matter. I can get to the airport faster, so that's cool. Yeah. Then he turns around and says, I want 30% of your company. Okay. Black um, guns matter. Okay, I'm so like, now what was like, was there a monetary value that he put into this or? He just he what just was, said, because I've helped you, you should give me 30%. I have all of the I have all of the stuff. I have all right, of the tweets. So did he give you did he give you money? Yep. Okay. And then then I said, I have these tweets too. And I said, Well, you know, I spent that on merch and da 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 da. He said, well, I mean, just, do you do you want to say how much money it was that he gave you? He said it. He's already posted it. Because I think it was doing, like six thousand dollars, yeah. and I'm looking at your GoFundMe right now. Your goal is one hundred and fifty thousand uh -huh. dollars. And he, but wait, here's the thing though. Here's mm -hmm. the thing though. Initially, I told him to put it there, as well as I said, right. I, I have the tweet saying, "Okay, listen, we're not going to do that. I'm gonna send you your money back." I also got the tweets with him saying, "No, well, if that's the case, if you're not going to give me the company thirty percent, you now need to give me seventy five hundred dollars." Okay, so I don't, I, I don't understand why he wants, you know, if he's trying to help your cause, there, here's what I'm trying to say. I'm looking at your GoFundMe and you guys are trying to raise 150,000. You're at like 46,000. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm like missing. We were already like, at, we were already at, we had already cracked our original goal of $25,000 before right. he even showed up. Let's be, let's be clear about that too. Right. So okay. we wasn't, and, and we already had merchandise. He said he wanted to help. Boom. But I'm trying to understand, like, why for an actor, you know, who's made movies, done TV shows, etc., why six thousand dollars is not small change to to some people, but to others it, it is. I mean, that's the reality of it. Why would that actor believe that six thousand dollars equals thirty percent of a movement that exactly. you're that you're leading? That that we've already generated over twenty five thousand dollars in donations. That we already have a website. That we're already traveling around the country. Yeah. He came to our Compton class when I we already flew to California. So it okay. wasn't like we had eight dollars and you know what I'm saying? We right. had already been doing it. What yeah. it was is when, when this happened and he went to the press, we found other companies that from 12 years ago that said, oh, he did he tried the same thing with my company. Uh Blue from Missing 24, she's on she gave testimony. There's a video on my YouTube channel on our YouTube mm -hmm. channel. She okay. said, Oh no, he tried the same thing with us last year. He okay. wanted us to get to give ownership of Missing 24. He wanted to give, oh yeah, right. Um, he, he wanted to give membership of Missing 24, uh, ownership of the logo of Missing 24. He wanted to create a, a Black Guns Matter incorporation in the state of California. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, see, here's what I don't understand. Like, this is the thing that I'm missing here, right? This is this to me is a revolution. It's a it's a it's a needed message in our community that you're that you're leading and you're projecting and you're the head of. And as far as I can see, and I'm sure anyone that's rational, that takes a lot of money. Right. So, you know, why would people who are giving money to the cause expect you to either give back? I mean, I, ju I just don't get it. And because why, he, why if they're giving he, money, he, do they expect like a percentage of the cause? And I, I his, I'm not his intention, that. his intention was never to. Black Guns Matter mm -hmm. has holsters. Mm -hmm. Black Guns Matter has classes. We're gonna grow this into a franchise. We wanna make, we wanna create jobs for people. We want people to be able to take care of their family. We want franchises. We want mm -hmm. mugs, we want guns. We want firearms training systems. Well, and, and then and, and here's the thing. I mean, this might be a little paranoid, but if some actor that we don't know what his credentials are as a gun guy, mm -hmm. right, comes into this thing and says, hey, I'm going to give you, this is, uh, honestly, this is a little bit of money. I'm sure, you know, $6,000, that doesn't take you all around the world, right. right? I mean, so if he comes in and he puts that money down and then he's like, yeah, I want percentages of this. How do we know this person doesn't like use that as a way to buy into your cause to shut it down? I mean, we've got people like Bloomberg out there with lots of money that right. this is, this is a crazy thought to me. I would never, there's now, no way in hell I would, I would go this route. Now here's the thing for me, when he presented it as I want to help you, I want to support what you're doing. I want to make sure that, you know, and to me, okay, $6,000, I know is not a lot of money, right? So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, we can get orders filled. We can get new merch. We can get fall line of stuff. We can get some spring stuff. We can turn that into something. Right. This isn't me 
balling out. I've I've sold what I sold the entire time I was in Philly. So I don't mm. I don't need like you know what I'm saying? Like that's no, not I get that's it. Not. I, but that's what I'm trying to say. Like I don't understand why someone would feel that that rises, especially if they really believe in the cause. I mean, instead of going, well, I gave you six thousand um, dollars, and then obviously seeing that you're doing something, because I think it's evident that you're doing something. There's folks out there who take money and then they don't do anything. Right. I think it's self evident that you're doing something. There's lots of record. Anyone could go search Black Black Guns Matter, Marsh Torre. We see that you're all over the place. That, that's the whole point. So why wouldn't that person say, well, here's another $6,000 or here's 60,000. But, and even if they did that, why would they want ownership of this thing? If they support it? He they thought I was, he thought I was a hood rat. He thought because I'm for the hood, I love the hood. I'm comfortable in the hood. He thought I wasn't going to pay attention. He thought I wasn't going to uh, think about my team that for two years have been doing this. What does that look like to my team? If I give you 30% of our company, and you just showed up with six thousand dollars. Do you know how much sweat equity my team has put into this work? Yeah, this is that's a that's a very weird that's a very weird thing. I, I you know I mean okay so go ahead. I don't want to cut you off from telling this story. I want to let you finish it. it. It became that way, and then when he doubled down, and again I have all of those screenshots. I didn't put him on blast. I have screenshots from him reaching out to people saying he's gonna follow every single step of my move. He's gonna be allies with all of my friends. He will always be there. When I told him, I'll give you your $6,000 back. Then when all of these people started coming out of the woodwork because they were like, yo, he did the same thing to me. He wanted this, he wanted this, he wanted it. over in the continent where he's doing this supposedly charity thing. There's brothers over there that you know were, were like, yo, how could you do this to us? He's used that celebrity, and because I, I liked him as an actor. Right, because he I went like, to, I, I believe when I read up about him, he went to Africa, a part of West Africa, because he did a genetic test yep. that identified that he came from, the, he had genetics from Sierra Leone or something right. like that in West right. Africa. So he went over there doing a lot of charitable things. And you're saying that he, you know, that he did this, like he, he went the same route, which seems to me like he's trying to like buy people and then control them with, like a little bit of money. It's almost like pimping. And he's and it, buying, it's, right. He's, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like a corporate takeover, but I'm pretending like I'm actually for you in the beginning. Right. And if, and if, and if I sign that, if I sign that now, what he thought was because he was the guarantor, you know, he did the same thing with blue from Mr. 24. I'm gonna give you an iPhone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep with you. I'm gonna tell my all of these little different things that I found out later, and yeah, I said, "Yo, do you that's some Bill Cosby shit right there, that's man." Some, that's I don't some approve of Bill, that. Chill, Bill ain't do it, Hank. Bill, chill. <laughs> okay, Hank, well, Bill ain't do it. <laughs> yeah. But no, at the at, at at the end of the day, it was like, okay, and then because he's a celebrity, he's more famous than me at that time. People are gonna be like, okay, but they forget that I have screenshots of everything, of, of yeah. everything. So exactly. when I say, "Hey, I'm gonna send you your money," and they and he goes, "No." Actually, now you have to send me seventy five hundred dollars. I'm from Philly. I'm gonna say fuck you. You're not gonna scam me. You're not now. If that's the case, take me to court. I said yeah, that on my. That's same something court. from a movie script or something you're like trying that. Trying to man. juice me. Yeah. The juice is running on the vig. Like yeah. get out of here, man. Yeah, and it's some like, gangster not, shit right there. So yeah, so that's that's what's yeah. up with that. But him. So that so that situation got resolved. Is that like still out there in the ether? It's, it's, it's resolved. It ain't in the ether for me. It's mm -hmm. resolved. Okay. It's resolved. I mean, I think he tried to play it. He mm -hmm. played his hand. He thought he could go to the press. He thought I was going to fold. He thought I was going to be quiet. And I'm not. I, listen, everybody think I'm doing all of this illegal stuff. I'm not. I'm yeah. not afraid. Well, of here, here's what I think. Look, I mean, first it's, it's of all, really. Wait, Hank, real quick. I got to mm -hmm. say this point. Sure. He moves like a COINTEL pro agent. Mm -hmm. That's what he gives me the energy of. When we first met, he was telling me about how he was so tight with Darren Seals who was the civil rights activist down over there in, in, in uh, what is that? I think St. Louis or something like that, right outside of St. Louis. Anyway, um, now that guy gets shot and his body's burnt up in the car. Now you're telling me you came to the, he came to the Compton class, uh, Ferguson. He came to the Compton class with the, with the shirt on, the Darren Seal shirt. You're moving like an agent. Anybody that consistently has problems with every movement that's trying to arm people or inform people, and you coming in there to disrupt, you move like an agent. You move right. like an agent. Then you run to the press and try to make it seem like I'm the bad guy. I, we had already raised twenty-five to $30,000 before you even showed up. Before you even showed up. You know, and, and, and these are things that when people, oh, he's stealing the money, how? We've been to 20-something cities. It would be different if I was saying, 
when we get to 150, the original goal was $25,000 for 13 right. cities. We but you guys it. met that and you've exceeded that so far. And the entire time we've been, every time we get a chunk of right. money, we go to another city. It's okay, how many cities have you been to? 20 something, I don't even know anymore. Right, I mean, so so let's say you've been to 20 something cities and then what, what does your, when you go there, what are you doing? Classes, are you? Classes, we feed people, lawyers, trainers, locations, okay. flights, hotels, car rentals. We yeah, made I, 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 can see you, I can see you burn $6,000 on one of those trips. I, you know. Listen, when I, when I say my team is <laughs> warriors, Vikings, Norse thunder gods for our level of uh, frugality, right. you see it, $46,000. Shaka Zulu. Let's, let's put Shaka Zulu. Zulu. Yeah. Let's, let's throw Shaka in them. In, Shaka, in them yeah, in. Don't leave him out. Don't leave an enemy alive <laughs> on the battlefield. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, if we've been to 20 some odd cities, we did four cities. In, in California, behind enemy lines. If we've done this, and our GoFundMe is for that, and if we've been to over 20 cities, I'm going back to Texas Saturday. I was just in Texas last week. Right. Then we're going to Minneapolis. So that's where the money went, to the thing yeah. that we actually said we were going to use it for. Right, absolutely. I mean, I can understand if someone gets into like funding a cause and then they feel, well, hey, this cause is not doing what I want it to do, which I think you guys are obviously doing things. Um, but if they feel like they don't want to fund it anymore, then I get it where they say, OK, I'm going to stop my funding. But I don't see where they think that, you know, that gives them some kind of ownership, especially if they didn't go into it with that as a written agreement. Right. And here's the other thing the, the entire time we still every month or sometimes twice a month are still doing ongoing free classes in Philly whenever I'm back in town. Right. So everybody thinks, you know, they're saying these things. And a lot of times they, they, they have a they don't have a, a business acumen. So they don't see how much money. And like you said, this takes money. Delta may love what we're doing, but they are not giving us free flights. No, this is a way. This is a way to spend money. I mean, I, I run into this. I'm not doing what you're doing. I think what you're doing is is um, is perhaps a little bit more noble than what I'm doing. You know, we're all we're all playing out different roles and and trying to do different things here. And honestly, for me, when people ask about that, like you you know, you're doing this for money. This is how I spend money. This is how I burn through money. This is why I ask right. people to help us out. Why we have people that sponsor us. Right. You know, um, like Safety Harbor Firearms, Ran CLP, <laughs> Andrews Custom, and Big Daddy Guns. You know, right. I mean, but we burn through money. That's what it is. I, I don't take any of that money to do anything for myself. I take all of it. It goes back into this. Then I take money from Lola and, and uh, my family and we put it into this because I really believe in what I'm doing. Right. It's, this it's, is how you burn money. Right. And and, and to say in, in 10 months, because we've been our, our GoFundMe has been up for 10 months, maybe, maybe close to 11 soon. Mm -hmm. We've done what we said we were going to do. The IRS is unforgiving. Right. Do you guys have a Patreon or are you not using that as a, do you, also have, a, do you have a Patreon? On, on our, on our, um, on a nonprofit tip of it? No, like Patreon is something where people can go there and as patrons, they can like, like pet pledge a certain amount. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I heard of this. No, we don't have, no, you that. have, you don't have that. Okay. Cause I have that, you know, I have, I think I'm, I'm going to look into that cause you're the second yeah. person that brought that up. So that's confirmation. We, yeah, all, all yeah, of we definitely we, we definitely use that, and there's folks like we're not, you know, we don't have a lot of people on Patreon, but there are people who are out there helping us out, and I think that would be something good for you to right. look into. The the our 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 thing is mostly is mostly our GoFundMe and our merch, okay. you know. So when people take these cool pictures of the Black Guns Matter shirts and wherever they are, there's people that went to London with these shirts on, where they can't even have guns, and they like in front of Big Ben. Uh -huh. And that's love. They like, they like guns, though. I could tell you they that. Like I, used guns. Live, I used to live in England as a kid. I lived in London. So, you know what I'm saying? so it's like it's like this is what this work is for. And it's like mm -hmm. I, I'm glad and I'm fortunate that you're giving me the opportunity to express some of these things, because to be perfectly honest, I, I never talk about it. It's like, OK, well, cool. If that's what y'all think, that's what y'all think. But, right. you know, this has been a great forum for me to express that. You know, I mean, we next month, excuse me, next week. Now, we are teaching firearm safety in a Philadelphia public high school. Well, inside the high school? Inside a high school. That has not been done since the wow. 40s. Um, so can, uh, do, have you revealed what high school this is, or are we like, nope. not revealing that because we don't know? Nope. Okay. And I just wanted to bubble. Mm -hmm. And this, mm -hmm. again, 
we making the hood great again. So this is what the yeah. work and this is the definitely energy. when that happens, when you know, when that's all out there, please let me know so I can sure. do whatever I can on my end. To I'll, promote I'll, that. I'll send you all of the footage. Um, next Saturday, the Blaze TV is coming to, you know, our class in Houston to record right. that. Good. You know, Good. like these are things that I, I want us to really again. So to the people that do feel ill will towards me because of the misinformation and it's not true. Right. Um, and all of those different things. I hope this is, you know, well, you know what I can tell you about that. And, and I'm just I'm bringing it up because I had this thought and then we, we got into stuff and, and, and uh, I dropped it. But here's the thing that I found, you know, there's uh, comedians. I can't remember which one. They had this joke that, you know, white people can only have one black friend. Mm. You know, and and the problem with that, I, I'm not saying this is true. This is comedy, folks. Yeah. You know, they say that, you know, white people can only have one black friend. And the problem with that is like that makes black people fight each other because they know that this person is only going to have one friend. <laughs> and I think the gun community and the manufacturers and the people who could do things for us, I think it winds up. It's kind of like that same thing's happening where other black people think like, man, this white people can only have one friend. So if they choose Coleon Noir or if they, or if they choose choose Mods to Ray, you know, if they choose Hank Strange, that there means there's going to be room for yeah. me. But obviously it's not true because there's all of us. There's a, you know, we're not the only ones. There's lots of people out there. Everyone's doing their own thing. It's not yeah. true, but I think we have that. It's one of the things that's in our brain. Condition. So we, we, we like fiercely defend things and think we can't share and, and, right. and we attack. Like if someone else gets a spotlight, that means I'll never get it. Right. You know, you know who I want to, I, I always will honor man. You know, Noir. I'm gonna keep. I always say this. He hates when I say. I say it. We He's hung out in Atlanta. Dude, man. He's a good dude. He's that, such that, a good dude. That guy's for real. I want him to run for president. Yo, hear me when I say. <laughs> me, me, and my and my partner. We were in Center City one day, and we got. I got an email, and it was a thousand dollar donation. And at that time, we had like twenty dollars in the GoFundMe or whatever. It was some small number. Mm -hmm. And it said, Coleon New War donated. And I told my partner, and she was like, get out of here. And I'm like, no, really. And I meet, now mind He's you. He's a good guy. He's a good guy, man. I everybody mean. knows it's from, in my pantheon, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, on YouTube, it's Hickok and New War. And everybody's around me, gets irritated. Oh, my God, you're <laughs> watching another one of those videos. Yes. So I DM'd him. After that, and I was like, yo, dude, I had never spoke to him before or anything. I said, yo, dude, I don't even know if you answer these, but, like, thank you. No, he doesn't, by the way. He he gets so many. He's a rock star. Yo, but listen, but listen. But, you know. He responded <laughs> and was like, yo, okay. call me right now. And I'm like, oh, and I kept it together. That's big. It's huge. Then yeah. he doubled down, like, a month or so later and dumped another $1,000 and I'll go fund me. Now, I'm saying that to say. He has gotten past the point of thinking that because I jumped into this Argo J. I was talking to him about it. That's another one. He's in my that's, a, that's another. I love that guy, man. Argo J. That's my big brother right there. And, and I'm in there and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, these these are those guys. Like I'm talking to them, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. having a fanboy moment. But I'm like, they not once ever because they got their own life going on and they got actual mm -hmm. things that they're doing. They not never once suffer from that Willie Lynch thing, and I yeah. and I, I I will they will always be in my they 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 Mount Rushmore for me, you understand? And it's yeah, like no, I feel you on that, man. That thought process is the reason why, because there's a lot of people I don't fucking like. I don't like you, and I'll say I don't like you, and don't give me no money. Mm -hmm. I don't want your money. We don't want your money. But those guys, Noir could have ignored me. Noir has given me so many introductions. Jay has given at, at, at NRA convention, mm -hmm. at, at annual meetings have, has given me so much. Yeah, that's thing. That's the thing. Some people need to understand out there. I mean, there are there are good people in the game, and those guys. It's you know definitely. I will jump in and and uh, you know air high five like witness. Yeah, like bear witness to to how Argo J is and Colin Noir. I mean, that's a guy that takes a lot of his time. And I mean, he's very generous with his time and all that kind of stuff with a lot of people. And I know like there's there's a situation going on because he's, you know, like the NRA chose him to be that one black friend. You know, there's there's more black people in the NRA. It's not just calling on Noir, right. you know, but it, it, he like he got that thing. And I know he gets a lot of flack for that. A lot of people attack him, but they chose the right person. There's a lot of things I'll tell you about the NRA. Um, there's things I don't agree with. 
with them, but they chose the right person in Coleon Noir. I think that he, that we are just seeing the beginning. We're right. just seeing the spark. He's not even really burning yet. Right. And yeah, the other so. thing about that is you can't discount the fact that they didn't make him. He already he built his following. Oh, absolutely. His, yeah. Like he built. It's like it's a line that Drake said in one of the songs. He said they didn't they didn't make me how I am. They just found me like this. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and also I, I got to mention that Lola Strange, you know, she loves him. That's like her her brother. For some reason, he reminds her of of her brother. So she, right. you know, she loves Coleon. He loves her. You know, I got to mention that. <laughs> when I'm saying when I'm saying these things, these are perfect examples of there can be. Listen, I don't do gun reviews. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't do right. gun reviews. I'm on education and training the hood. Do you put out there? I saw that there's a question from like way back, and, and just since we've been like getting into a lot of stuff, people want to know what's your EDC. Do you put that kind of stuff out there? I, I don't. I yes, a Glock 19. Our holsters that are going to be on sale on our website. Okay. There's only yeah. 19 of these. These are the Black Guns Matter holsters. When are they um, going on sale? The, uh, probably tonight after I'm plugging this. And tonight, uh, what yeah. time are they going? Uh, as soon as we as soon as we put the pictures up, so they'll be up okay. soon. I, everybody on my social media. Um, What's these that? are gonna be sixty bucks. There's only nineteen of these Glock okay. nineteen. There's only nineteen of these. Okay. Um, we'll probably like do like an auction. All of the proceeds will go to the work. I don't make a penny off of these. Um, we'll probably auction like five of them if like like the last five after okay. we sell like. So can can them. someone pay for that by credit card? Yep, they can get it okay. on credit card. So here's what I want to do. I want to reserve one of those. I'm going to pay for it by credit card, and then I'm going to give it away to someone watching this video. Damn, Damn I got you. All right, so it'll be so, this one. Not yes, exactly. that one. I want you to. I want you I'm to market, sign it. <laughs> yeah, I want you I'm to the market because I don't have. A, I'm going to cut it right now. So whoever gets this, I'm yeah. cutting a hole in the bottom of right. it. Yeah, okay. and I want and I want like I want you to put some graffiti or whatever on there, and someone watching this video right now. And here's what I want you to do: I want you to like comment about this holster, and then right. I want you to like share this video and everything. And I will pick one of those people. I will pay for this because right. you know people give me things for free. I don't I don't want this for free. I want to pay for it, and then I right. want to give it to someone out there. The the um so the answer is I don't carry every day. All of my gun friends get on me, but a mm -hmm. lot of the places that I go, I can't legally carry in Illinois. Okay, can't. you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Um, right. the other thing is uh I, we deal with a lot of people that have trauma in relation to firearms in the hood. Their brother okay. got the, his face opened up. Mm -hmm. Um, I cannot lead with a firearm with them. Okay. Um, for them, I got to deal with helping them heal. I got to. Yeah. yeah, conversations, and mm -hmm. as soon as they see me with it on the hip, it's a different energy. It's a okay, different so I mean, that, now I I get that Glock nineteen. That's a pretty good, you know, that's a pretty good uh, gun to EDC. But you know, there's other things involved in EDC. You know, you got knives, you got like flashlights, and and so on. What other things fall uh, into not, that no, category no. for you? Uh, Are you a knife guy? No, I'm not. I'm not a knife guy. Okay. Um, Do you I'm carry not, a flashlight? I mean, no. that's like. I can show you right now. I got a flashlight on me right there, man. This one actually happens to be like a Caltech flashlight. Right. There you go. Some people will recognize that, but you should always have a flashlight on you. Everybody, listen, I'm, I'm going to keep it 100. I know some of y'all are going to get mad at me. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I don't do the, the tactical belt. I don't I don't have the backpack all the time, and I know I should. <laughs> I know I should. Right. I know. It takes I time. It. it takes time. It takes time, and... It, does it put me at a disadvantage? Hell yes. Right. Hell yes. And even even going into you know even even going into certain places where I can't carry legally, and places that I've been before that I was carrying illegally. Right. But they're waiting for oh, Maj Touré, the founder of Black Guns Matter, was in Chicago with a gun illegally. Bam. My position on the chessboard is a little bit different. Right. Right. You know. So what I normally do in a lot of those places is I'll have homies from Chicago that's with me. That you know they do what they do, you know. So, um, but as far as the you know the educational component and, and, and other things, I definitely got to give a shout out to you know the NSSF. They've given us you know firearm locks. They've given us um, promo material, um, you know, and things to kind of like get the hood onto things like EDC. You know, right. this company sending us stuff out like you know really really nice belts. Um, I would love to get you know Surefire to you know to get us some lights. You know, okay. and things like that. You know, so I'm not saying we're a, we're past that, but the demographic that I'm dealing with are complete newbies. Complete okay. newbies. They don't know what rimfire means. They don't know what they still saying clip. 
you right. know. So right. saying this to say that's our, that, that's our job, man, to bring people into the fold and and, and uh, bring them up. I mean, recently I got my barber to uh, become a gun guy, and I'm pretty proud of that. You know, I think that's part of our responsibility. And uh, you know, I got he got into handguns, and then he he got himself you know an, an AR, and then I push him. I'm like, listen, you got to carry a, a light. You got to have a knife. You know, I got a knife on me. Someone stole my knife. I usually carry, but you know. Wait, put it over a little bit. I, nobody. Yeah. Can oh, hold on, hold on. Here, here we go. That's a Spyderco blade right there. That's nice. You know, it's a Spyderco CPM S thirty V. Whatever your that means. <laughs> huh? What's your EDC? Um, well, I'm carrying right now a Glock 43. That's what I'm carrying on me. You know, it's loaded. I don't believe in like pulling out loaded guns you can or whatever. With single stacks. Huh? Well, no, you know what? I, I think, man, listen, I usually carry a Glock 19. You know what the problem is? Is that since this Glock 43 came out, it has maimed me because <laughs> it's like so lightweight, you know, and easy. Yeah. Like I even carry it when I'm home. I have it on my sweats. That's how lightweight it is. And right. then I found now that I'm like carrying it a lot. And it's kind of like a bad thing because I have a uh, Glock 26, Glock 19. And, and those are the things I prefer to carry. But right. just like for the ease of running around and stuff like that you know it's th them extra them, yeah. them and i have ounces make a difference on your hip all day right now i've got like extended magazines oh okay all right, all right. and stuff well, like so that you, you, know, so you I mean, solved the problem never mind yeah yeah you know i mean you, I, you know i can still <laughs> throw some extra but nothing beats like being able to throw you know 15 to 17 rounds you, you know for me there. 19 is great because of the fact that it's not it's enough for me to if if, if it's a real rumble it's enough mm -hmm. for me. I mm -hmm. hate smaller. I can't. You right. bigger than me, probably. So like, you can hand. You probably okay, probably. Okay, now. What's what, 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 what that mean? I'm bigger. No, than, I I'm mean just, like. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> Saying this to say, like, this 43 yeah. is a lot more snappy for me. It's, it's a lot more snappy. Right. The weight 19, it just fits all of the sweet spots for me. Yeah, Glock 19 is a perfect gun, man. You don't have to sell me on that. I've got two of them. <laughs> oh, all right. Boom. There you go. Yeah, yeah but you, so. did, you did handle it with the extended mag, though, so you straight. Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But, you know, I mean, I, I usually have a Glock 19 in my backpack. <laughs> right, right. See? There you go. Yeah, I'm just talking about what's on my body right now. Right now, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, for yeah. me, for me, it's like it, it's, it's, the bigger thing for me is, and I, I know that I'm putting myself, I, and I, I want to be very clear, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I, I want people to understand that, you know, the moves that I'm making are putting me in a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, you're not, you're, yeah, you've got to walk the line. You know, it's not like Willie Nelson, you get caught out there with some weed and then we're like, hey, you know, it's Willie Nelson, let him go. Right. I mean, you know, gun, gun, these are felonies and stuff like that. Right. And, and the laws are so weird. And, and what individual states and cities and all that decide to do. I mean, it's crazy. That's, right. that's why we have to change that whole situation. Right. If anybody also wants to help with, you know, assisting in the work that we're doing, any, you know, whole, I know a lot of the holster makers are switching over. If you got any old replicas, send them to us. You know, um, we use those for the classes, you know, uh, to get people. How can people, so, it, so let's say there's companies or people out there that have, uh, you know, old holsters and stuff like that that they don't use anymore. How can they send that to you guys? If they email us, info at officialblackgunsmatter.com, email mm -hmm. us, it, it all, we get it. We get everything, and then we'll send you the shipping address. Um, also, companies that want to sponsor a city, where we light is, we can get people to come out and learn and get the basics and put them on the path. That's easy. What we don't have is brands for our demographic to identify with because okay. they don't see, you know, sponsored by such and such. They don't see yeah. that at our classes because right. no, you know, most of it is from the muscle or, you know, small, like, you know, uh, stores like azfirearms.com over there in Avondale in, in Arizona. They'll bring us out, you know, but that's in their location. So people know from that community, they go there and get their guns from now on. But we want to create more brand I, brand loyalty with, with reputable companies. So if you're listening, if you're a company, even a smaller company, you know, mm -hmm. um, you want to bring us out you know, to, you know, what we're doing to, to your town, get us info at official black guns .com. Um, bring us out to your town, you know, so we can generate that energy. One, that's an upsell for, you know, you, your company bringing us out and we can create some sort of brand. So now what do you, so like in, in that situation, I mean, obviously people can get in touch with you and find out, but like, what do you guys need in order for a company to be able to bring you out there? They just got to pay for us to get out there. And we the, the amount that's built into that, we do everything else. We find the locations. We get the lawyers. We get the trainers. We get 
We do everything. We do the PR. We get press. We get media. We do every single thing. Right. And um, okay. you just show up and let people know that, hey, we're in league with this situation. And we leave that information, all of that contact information with the people that bring us out. So you now cool. have a built in, you know, base of new market of people that want to be put onto this. The people that come to our events aren't accidentally showing up. They register, you know, they, they come, they get the emails, they, you know, they're aware. And they, they, they're, they're new minds that want to continue and, and, you know, learn how to defend themselves. They want to be, right. you know, hard line supporters of the Second Amendment. You know, we're, we're assisting in getting them on that path. And I mean, we love it. We love okay. it. Okay, so, so they just need to um, hit them up with what they need to do again there? Yep, One info at officialblackgunsmatter.com. Okay, and then I'll try to put some links in here. Now, you guys have a main website. Mm -hmm. Officialblackgunsmatter.com. Okay, and then you have a Facebook, right? Those are yep. the major ways. So yep. in, uh, in the uh, description Black of this. Guns Matter underscore Maj Toure on Facebook. Okay, so in this, or or maybe Lola, if Lola can hear me, we'll do this. Um, I'm going to go to like one question that someone has, and then I want to talk about the NRA with you. Sure. So this is from Mark Wagner, who's like a big fan of mine. You know, I put Mark Wagner, like he's in the super fan category. Yeah. I love this dude, man. You got to love the super fans. I need more of those, by the way. Right. I, right. I, I want to build an army of like a thousand super fans. Right. <laughs> I want to clone Mark a thousand times. <laughs> so Mark says, uh, do you consider yourself a libertarian? Actually, I am. Le I lean libertarian. I, mm -hmm. I really do. I mean, if I had to label it something, I definitely lean that direction. Um, just because of most people in the hood don't even know what that means. Right. You know. Now, do you? To, so, uh, do you vote? I mean, yes. I know this sounds silly, yes. but do you vote? Especially for local votes. Okay. Local votes. You know, the, where the money going. Who's the mayor? Who's your city council? On local, absolutely. Because so what? Is, so what are you registered oh. as in um, in in Philadelphia, Republican. in Pennsylvania? Republican. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I know what that word actually means, and I know this is a republic. Democracy yeah. just means mob rule. It's more of us that want to do the stupid thing than you guys that want to do the smart thing. So we win. Right. Uh, but a republic in a republic, people are free to make individual choices, and each individual is their own sovereign entity. That okay. makes up a collective and to the republic for which it stands, you know. So, no, it's not a, a oh, my God, you're only doing that for, you know, re Republicans, you know, people should really do the knowledge on that and see. Yeah, what that no, I'm, not, I'm not judging you for it all. Believe it right. or not, I'm registered here in Florida as a Democrat. <laughs> right, but, but here's the funny thing. But I, I just don't vote for Democrats. It's a weird thing because look, cause Florida has this weird law. I don't know if you know about this, but so in the primaries, you can vote for a Republican, Democrat, or Independent, but you have to be vote for the party that you're registered for. So if you go Independent, which is really what I am, then you have to. You can only vote for the Independent. So Lola registered as an Independent, and then she went to the primaries. And if there's no Independents running, you can't, can't vote. vote. Yep. Yeah. So I refute. Like so, I was like, well, I'm not doing that. And then I didn't. I just left it what it was years ago, and didn't switch over to Republican because you know, I mean, there's like. There's it's all these cons to it all. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and that's why I don't even like like the category, like, are you a conservative? Or are you a liberal? Or are you, uh, you know, yeah, are I, you, I, are you... I, I, I lean more libertarian and I may change over to that. I had I had a great conversation with one of the lawyers that, you know, in, in Avondale, um, Mark Victor. And mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do some work soon, too. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I think like it depends on the question you ask. Like we were talking about before, man. I don't, you know, it's not my business what people do in, in the comfort of their own homes. It doesn't hurt other people, you know. So I don't care who you sleep with, who you get married to, what um, you smoke. yeah, what you smoke, all of that kind of stuff. Not my business. Um, I don't think the like we've got way too many laws in the government. So it really depends on what question. Right. You're asking me, and where do I come down on it? And I, I definitely go out and vote, I, especially for the local stuff, like you said. And and every time I vote, I think about it. And even here, where I live, people don't understand this. Like especially in the South, um, it's you know, things have switched over time. So there's a lot of people in the South that are pro-gun, but they're Democrats. Right. Right. You know. And, so, that's, and that's that juxtaposition that when you ask, and I know that you, you, the question wasn't he wasn't being funny. You know, right. because he's hearing as I'm communicating, he's going, well, is he a libertarian? You know, but some of that stuff isn't as, you know, 
black and white. Like you said, no. okay, he's yeah. a Democrat, but he's also a staunch two way person. And usually that would be the opposite. Yeah. You know, I mean, really, if you if you go back to like, um, you know, the Civil War and all that kind of stuff and slavery, really, the, the Democrats were the ones that wanted slavery yep. and the Republicans were the ones that wanted to end it. This is yep. like a weird kind of, you know, people don't people because don't, because the opposition and things, all things change. That's the only constant change. Yeah. You just have to be willing to be aware of the changes and adapt to them to, you know, that it got cold. The dinosaurs couldn't, you know, yeah. make heat. They not here no more. Yeah. You know? Also, so, don't be dogmatic to anything. That's what I believe. Now, the if, if, if I'm a dogmatic to, no, you know, we're not, none of us perfect. So if I'm dogmatic to anything, I'm dogmatic to, I want, if I'm alive, and, you know, as long as my children, my grandchildren are here, I want to be able to defend myself. So I'm dogmatic about the Second Amendment, right. about, you know, my ability to defend myself. So. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that uh, mental conditioning. I'm perfectly fine with the, accepting right. that box. Absolutely. So here's another question. Um, I need to get into the NRA thing before we wrap this up. Uh, someone wants to know, are you is your organization different from Black Rifles Matter? I've seen, I didn't know that they were actually an organization, um, but I've seen their shirts. They're actually on one of my, um, the uh, the NRA meetings. Uh, okay. Somebody had the shirt on and we stood next to each other and took some right. pictures, but mm -hmm. I'm not too <laughs> familiar with that organization. Um, okay. So like you're right not affiliated or anything? No, no, no. Okay. No. Uh -uh. Okay, so there you go. So now here's what I want to talk about. Um, you were obviously at the NRA show this year. This was your first NRA, right? Yep. How was it for you? It was amazing. I didn't know I was this famous until I was there. Yeah, because I was watching you. I'm, I've got to go back and look at my archives and see. We didn't formally meet at NRA or anything like that. I did. I did see you there. Um, I'm like weird, man. I, you know, I always want to like officially introduce myself to people, and there were a lot of people around you. I saw you hanging out with Coleon and stuff like that. Um, but you had this look on your face, like. Wow, this is bigger than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> yep, because I didn't. I, I I I don't even know how many autographs I signed and and um, pictures. <laughs> pictures. I, I I I no doubt about it. Took over a thousand pictures. Yeah. Did you know there was gonna be that? I love going to NRA, man. We go every year to NRA, and it like it refuels me because this is right. where you see your people of like. Right like all across the spectrum, all kinds of people, you know, transgender, gay people, black yep. people, white people, you know, people from outside of the country. There's a dude that's always at the uh, NRA show that's from England, you know, and he, he can't have guns and stuff like that. What's that guy's name, Richard or something? I, I can't remember his name right now, but he, he walks around, he's got a jacket and there's a bunch of patches on it. Mm. You know, this, this British guy. So you see, all, you get all this love and you realize that there is a lot of love out there. Absolutely. For me, it was, it was a few things. One, that was the first time I got to kick it with New War. Right. And I mean, we, we had dinner, we had drinks, you know, um, I was the first time I was able to kick it with Jay, you know, um, mm -hmm. I met, you know, and then, then you definitely had drinks if you were hanging out. With oh, Jay. man, they got <laughs> he's going to look at this, you know, he's going to look at this and be like, man, I can't believe <laughs> Yo, <about> me. <laughs> Jay got me. We was in some part of Atlanta plastered two, three in the morning. <laughs> but um, you can ask Lola, like every time we if we if we're anywhere in town where Argo Jay, he's at yo, the party. Okay, so look, so look <laughs> next. All right, so right now we're going to do this. It's in Dallas next year, right? Okay. You, me, Noir, Jay. Um, who else can we get? We gotta get. You know who we should? Uh, American Gun Chick. Okay, she's cool. She's fun. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, okay, Jaeger. so invitation. Jaeger. I don't know if if I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. If I'm involved with it, we're not getting Jaeger. What you don't like? Yeah, I see. I'm finding out who doesn't know and like. No, it's not that. It's not that. I'm blacklisted with Jaeger, so you know. Are you? Yeah, I did something like uh, I, I went to train with someone that used to work for him. So they blacklisted me and put me on a fatwa and all that type of bullshit. I did not. See, I'm just I'm finding <laughs> out. I, I don't know the politics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, I that's like Jaeger. I uh, mean, you know, listen, I, I have nothing against Jaeger at all, man. You know. All right. So um, wait. So wait. So wait. If, if I can. Are you sure is you whitelisted? Blacklisted, yes. I'm pretty sure I got that from you. Yeah, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to put it out there. Why is it got to be? Why is it got to be blacklisted, Hank? 
Yeah, well, you know, I mean, whatever you want to call it, it's better than blackballed because I don't really want to say that, you know, I'm like blackballed by James Yeager. Because so know. wait, so wait, if if I can if I can create a space where, first and foremost, I don't know if you know that, but I've watched a ton of your videos. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't um, know that. No, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> so okay, so if I can get something around that, right? Somehow, I don't know. No, it's not. I could. T I could tell you right now, it's not going to happen. And I'm not. Let's. Here's the thing. Like, I haven't really put this out there in the public, but I believe in truth and stuff. So it came up, and I'm telling you. But I'm not trying to like. I'm not trying to attack him or anything like that. We we have like a an understanding. Okay, <laughs> that's all the right, best so way wait. to put it. And I'm not so, knocking him at all. You know, I. So I who can, who can we all hang out with? Think about the picture that we can all right. get. I got I got a picture with me, Noir. Yeah, I'm I'm, d I'm down to hang out. I mean, you know, you said you like Hickok Forty Five. I don't know if we can get you know if we can get him in there, but he's I'm a, a good I'm guy. A, I'm, a, I'm a inbox John. I met him yeah. at NRA. The big John, yeah, big John. Probably Big John can help you do that. He's a good John, guy. Also, Zeke. Yeah. So yeah. look, so we should all have like a dinner next okay. year at NRA. I'm putting it out in the ether. This is gonna happen. Okay. All right. And then we get we got we got to get more women though, because then we'll look really sexist if we don't. Well, I, I'll bring Lola, but definitely if we get American Gun Chick, and there's a lot of um, other, you know, good women out there in the gun world. Um, Can we get Dana? Uh, who's Dana? Oh, Dana Loesch. Yeah. Um, I don't know. She might be too big time for us, but hey, someone else, someone so out there cool. who's bigger than me might be able to make that happen. We can get, I think so, because I can get Chris, I can get her husband and ask him. And if we okay. like prep way ahead of time, right. if we can make like the Avengers dinner. Yeah, I'm down, man. I'm down. Okay. I mean, whoever, whoever wants to be there, I don't care who's there. I'm not trying to like, like not invite anyone to be there. I'm always down to break bread with anyone even my enemies believe it or not man it's just right. the way that, that it, you know that i was raised i don't like back down from stuff i know i don't put a lot of that out there i'm not trying to say i'm like a badass but you know that's not the life that i'm trying to live you know i i need to be able to look at myself in the mirror and go to go to bed at night and all that right. kind of stuff so if we're gun, here's what i believe if we're gun guys we we don't all have to like each other because this kind of craziness all kinds of stuff happens but personally from my opinion you know, we have a bigger enemy out there that we need to fight and we have yep. to figure out how to try to deal with each other Absolutely. and move forward. So, Absolutely. you know, We're I'm sure I'm sure we spark yeah. something here and I'll have to answer yeah. this at some point in the future. Yeah. <laughs> but here's, also, here's one of here's something I want to get plastered in Dallas. Sorry, that's happening. Yes. Yeah, well, OK. It's gonna well, be... he looked at Lola. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm looking at Lola because you see, here's the thing. Lola's the one that does all the drinking. She's the partier, <laughs> not me. She's looking at me like, you don't even party. You're just like a big nerd, you know? Lola's, we <laughs> all hanging out. You're going to get yeah. plastered. Yeah, when, uh, yeah <laughs> everyone tr everyone tries to get Lola drunk or whatever when whenever we do stuff. But I'm like a big nerd. So, you know, I, I'm not saying I don't drink. But like I told you before, I really don't. You know, I don't yeah. drink, but see you like for me personally, man, I just love to hang out with people and talk to them and all that kind of stuff. So I'm in. Right. You know, all right, well, we need. yeah. I so now, yeah, let me ask you this, though. We were on the subject of the NRA. So a lot of people say that your group is controlled by the NRA. What's the deal with that? Is that true? Not true? <laughs> It's absolutely true. No, nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> People will get at that, man. You've been, you've been like, it's just... absolutely true. No, it's false. The mm -hmm. NRA gives us a platform because we're touching demographics that historically they have not. And that's smart. Right. The NRA has not given us one penny. Not me, not my team, not our organization, not our GoFundMe. Right. Do they give you direction? Do they tell you guys what to do or say? You know how much I be fucking cussing? No. <laughs> they, they, you, I cuss all the time. I put ratchet stuff on my social media. Right, right, right. Yeah. No. That, that and, reminds and me of something else thing. I want to ask you, but go ahead. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. If the NRA bought me, I can right. be bought. Let me be very clear. Okay. My number is really, really high, and y'all right. would know it. Y'all yeah. would go, nah, he's changed. Because I would change. Right. It would be a hundred million dollars or more to to stop doing the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have to be so I would I would be able to be so comfortable for my children and my grandchildren and my great. It would it would be generational wealth immediately. 
Right. But also at the same time, what's wrong with the NRA, you know, getting out there and supporting what you do and helping you, like, and, for and, example, you know, helping you to get out to some cities, you know, and that's where I actually want the NRA to say, hey, we'll sponsor here, here and here. Yeah. I want the NRA. Yeah. I mean, because look, I'm giving the money. Here's what I believe. I believe that it should be money that has no strings attached to it. You know, I don't think that they should give you money and then say, well, this is the message we want you to to right. project or we don't want you to do this or we don't want you to do that. I mean, when I when I make my deals, I spend a lot of time more than other people do doing what I'm do what I'm doing, because I try to make sure that I have a relationship with the people I'm dealing with, that they know who I am and they know that I don't even censor myself. Believe it or not, I'm going to do and say what I want to. And, um, you know, I don't want to have that thing where people try to I've like gotten into a lot of stuff with people. There's people I don't deal with because they try to there's people who've tried to should night me, man. And right. you would know what that means. Right. For sure. You know, sure. they're trying to should night me in this game. Not right. like not like it, I'm not saying that's happened in music with me. Right. I've seen that happen. But, you know, uh, where people try to do that. And it's the same thing, like, you know, in the gun game. It's amazing to me. Right. And, and and saying that, that experience with that, you know, that other guy, which is what made me go, oh, OK, it's the same as the street here, too. It's just mm -hmm. people don't really shoot you here. They try to get you to sign stuff or sue you. Right. You know? So but yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with the NRA. So I'm an NRA member. Um, I there is nothing wrong. I think they're the largest organization. I would love for them to put. Hey, yeah, the, NRA NRA needs to, the NRA needs to do some things. And, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to I don't want to knock them all the way. I think they are trying to do some things. But what they need to do is um, try Put to get money behind Black Guns Matter and let us do the things that they can't or aren't doing right. Now. Right. And then that's, get away from right trying to attach right. strings to that. You know, don't right. Like, without, right. Right. without the string attaching. If, yeah. this ain't, you ain't Geppetto to me. No, you your know? message needs to be real. You know, you and I are not the same exact kind of person, but we can deal with each other. We can relate. Right. And I think that the world needs your message in your way because people are going to see, hey, that's genuine. Just like right. the same thing with me. You know, this is really who I am. I'm always joking around. I have fun. You know, I'm always asking right. a lot of questions and all that. People need to see all of these things. But if you put a filter in the middle of that by saying, well, like people try to tell me, oh, you know, I think maybe you should cut your mohawk off and you should dress like this. And I, and I laugh at them. I'm like, no, I'm not right. doing this because I want someone to dictate to me who I am and how I should live my life. You know how many so. people told me you shouldn't do Tommy Loren show. You shouldn't be a member of the NRA. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Uh, Jaeger's a racist. Uh, Holy on New War is going to be. Yeah, I could tell you. I could tell you right now. I mean, we were talking about James Yeager earlier. He's not a racist at all. No, at all. And, I, and I'm around mm -hmm. racist. I, I see him. I'm like, oh, right. that's, and then when you show people, it's like, see that? That's an actual racist. Yeah. You're, 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 you're watering it down to the point where we can't really call the real bullshit. Yeah, we no. can't. Yeah, we can't just throw that out at everyone because, you know, there are people who are genuinely racist in this game, in the gun right. game. Right. And it's not going to serve us well if we just called everyone that, because then, it, then when this comes up with with people and it's, it's tough, like how are you actually going to have evidence? Right. People have to take right. our word because you can't necessarily have like a camera running in someone's face all the time. Okay. And if we get out there and say, hey, this guy is certified a racist by us, we've seen things. People need to be able to take us at our word for that. Right. And if we cry wolf, they won't do it. Just like when people, this new term is suspected white supremacists. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> on, man, get the fuck. Yeah, I, all right, cool. If that's your thing, yeah, cool. But to me, you know, I think that's that's why it's very key for us to make sure that we're, our presence is felt not only in the NRA, but other USCCA, you know, uh, Second Amendment Foundation. I mean, uh, there's other ones too, Yeah, you know. So it's like, nah, but yeah. the, the NRA, I mean, they, they have it. If it's not, if it's not the NRA, if it's someone else out there, you know, I'm, I'm not against, I think, listen, I think there should be a lot of different organizations because right. we don't really need one ring to rule them all here, man. Nah, nah, that's, yeah. that's called a monopoly. Yeah. We see how those work out. Yeah. You know what I would say to that? Miss what? me with that. Miss me with that. <laughs> okay, here's why. Here's why I just said that because <laughs> Lola and I had this conversation with about you, and I'm yeah. like, you know, because people like I see we're, we we're friends on Facebook, right? Right. 
And uh, you know, I, I, I follow some of the stuff you've done on Facebook. Yeah. And sometimes you're like in something with someone and you say, yeah, you know, miss me with that. I'm like, Lola, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> right, right. So uh, that seems like one of your favorite sayings. So you need to Because I gotta tell, because people throw a lot of bullshit and I'm like, yo, you gotta miss me with that bullshit. Like, <laughs> go, it's over there. You know, oh, okay, and so okay. that, that, that miss me with, miss me with that. Because uh, that's the definition. You're like the poster. You're the poster right. for miss me with that. <laughs> miss me with that. And and, yes. and, and uh, there's another one that is started to pick up its own steam, um, especially because I eat a lot of food. Uh -huh. And on my Instagram, I'll put like every time I'm um, I'm, I'm eating somewhere, mm -hmm. I'll post a picture. Right. And and I'll say whatever the type of food it is, the beans were sauteed. The chicken was fried. The macaroni was cheesy. But you you wasn't there. So I'll put hashtag <laughs> you wasn't there. Oh, all, all of my okay. food. So that's another one that okay, everybody. That's, that's like, like, that's something cool the kids are doing now. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. okay. well, it's something cool that the solutionaries are doing. So Hank, right, you gotta right. like take some okay. pictures of your food and hashtag you wasn't there. You have to okay. do it now. Okay. Lola, write that down. Hashtag you wasn't there. You wasn't, and then, but it gotta be you, not Y O U. Oh, can't you. be Y O U. Oh, you. Just the you. You wasn't there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, do I spell the the there with like a D or no? Just the H. Just the U okay. is the All only right. thing that's different. And <laughs> from now on, your 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 donuts are now power rings. They're no more donuts. Donuts are power rings. Oh my god. Donuts gosh. are power rings. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay. I yeah. am an old man, so okay. I'm gonna write this down. I'm also gonna do miss me with that now. I'm just looking for a reason. That's why I told. Her, I'm like, I gotta, gotta find wait something. For the moment to be like, yeah. Miss me with that. I'm gonna put miss me with that. Then I'm gonna tag you. Yep. <laughs> And then look, I'll critique it. I'll go. Eh, it's, it's a one out of five. It's a four out of five on the on the on the the placement oh, okay. of the all hashtag. Right. So I'm, that means I have to think about it now. You got to. Yeah. Slang has to be critical. Yeah. Awesome. Listen, I don't want to keep. I know you got a bunch of stuff going on, man. I don't want. I think we've been going like two hours. Yeah. It's been awesome on my end, man. I hope people have enjoyed it out there. Um, yeah. I want to thank everyone that's watching. So before I like close it up and everything, and I mean, end this broadcast and then you and I will kick it a little mm -hmm. bit behind the scenes. You know, do you have like some last words you want to share with people or what do you want people watching this to take away from this whole thing? I want everyone that's watching this to one. First, I want to to anyone that has any ill will to me or what we're doing based on bad information. I hope that I was able to clear that up for you. You know, I hope that you now can understand the reason why I was silent about a lot of things. And I hope that you'll receive my information and now we can move forward with the work. Um, anyone that has said anything negative about me or posted, totally forgive you. It's not a knock. It's not a negative. You, 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 you thought you got credible information. You didn't. Um, now that that's out of the way, I just hope that everybody can, you know, we can all figure out ways to work together. The opposition... They are not sleeping. I'm in different rooms now and I'm looking and, you know, if I take this hat off and put my hair up in a bun and wear a suit, I can get in, I get into different rooms now. And I hear those anti-gun conversations. There's actually uh, people in organizations in Pennsylvania that are anti-gun lobby groups hiring black males to combat me. They are hiring black males to promote an anti-gun agenda because we're on the scene. This has happened. The other side, while we're fighting each other, are adapting, getting stronger. They took a hit with, with, with Trump winning. They took a hit. They are somewhere licking their wounds and rebuilding. So every second, every nanosecond that we're fighting each other, they are getting stronger. And they got a gang of money, all of the money. And you know, you don't, you know, they got, they got a strong war chest. You know, and uh, and they, they play on people's emotions, you know. So the best thing that I can leave for everyone is, you know, um, let's put it in the past. Let's do the work. If, if you've said something and if you even if it hasn't gotten to me yet, my door is open. You got my social media at Maj Touray on Instagram, um, the YouTube channel, you know, Black Guns Matter. Um, you got Facebook, all Twitter. It doesn't matter. It's me. Please, let's put the work in. Let's put the we can win, we can win. I see it. We can win, especially when we get the hood online. We can win. I guess I'm I'm I've literally been across the country. They are afraid. They are afraid of our unity. Black, white, old, young. They're afraid. They're scared. 
They didn't have people like us from poor demographics that could build bridges and communicate thoroughly on different levels. We translators. You know, we have an opportunity to change something now that we have. We, we don't even know what it's like to be to have real freedom and gun ownership in America if you were born after the NFA. You don't even know. You don't even know. You know, so we have an opportunity to do those things, you know, and um, if, if anything that I've said tonight that we've communicated about tonight, if you feel, you know, prom, you know, uh, in the least bit, if you want to support what we're doing, please donate 10 bucks, 10,000. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. Support, you know, because we need it. We're doing the work. This is my full time gig. This is our full time gig, you know, um, and just let's just let's just bury all them hatchets. Let's just let's just do the work, man. Cause the op the opposition they coming, and there ain't no politicking when the killers is coming. Y'all know that, you know. So that's what I leave everybody with. Well said, man. Well said. You know, I I just want to let people know. In in my opinion, you know, we we spoke a little bit before this, but you came on here and you answered everything openly, honestly. You really didn't, you know, shut down anything that we asked you. You know, I think you presented yourself pretty well. I'm I'm personally impressed, it, and if there's other people out there that are impressed by that, or even if there's other people out there that you know, um, like you said, that are throwing that shade, I think what we should know is that what we should keep in our minds is that there's room here for all different voices. You know, this is not really a situation where someone can only have one friend. There can be a lot of us, and we can we can put our message out there. I definitely would encourage people to um, to seek you out. You know, if they feel if they felt something coming from you that they identify with, seek you out and, and support what you're doing. You know, for my part, I want to thank you for coming out and doing that. I think that, you know, your name came up in, in something, you know, a past video that we put up out there. And, you know, it was cool of you of like, you know, this is our first interaction. You know, it was a cool way for you to come on here. Definitely that holster. I'm buying it <laughs> and we're going to give it away to someone, you know, and uh I invite you when you have something else going on, man, and, and you need us to, you know, promote that or whatever. We're going to be here. My mission is to keep broadcasting like this every day, always putting this this message out so that we can promote people like yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. So I want to thank you. I want to thank everyone that's watching. I want to thank everyone that helps make this possible, you know, and especially those folks out there that support me on Patreon. It's uh, Patreon slash Hank Strange. I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, Maj Toure, see, I'm, I'm rocking it now. Maj Toure is, is going to probably set up a Patreon, so you're going to want to listen out for that, yep. you know, and, and follow it. And, and you know what? Check him out on, uh, what was it, CD Baby, SoundCloud? Check him yes. out. He's got a nice flow. <laughs> yeah. CDBaby.com backslash Black Guns Matter. I mean, excuse me, backslash Maj Toure. And, uh I don't know if y'all hit me up. I'll, I'll just send y'all some of the music. Like, you know, yeah. I'm working on a fourth project now. Let's, yeah, let's... I like the flow, man. I'd like to see you, you know, uh, put some stuff out there, man. It's cool. Yeah. I like the creativity. I'm feeling no it. No All right, brother. I'm going to end this broadcast. Peace. Peace.